is a Rogers Sports presentation. Hello and welcome to the Oshawa Civic Auditorium for tonight's game between the Mississauga Ice Dogs and the Oshawa Generals. I'm Donald Beattie with Bob Benham and Joel Glenn. And Bob, once again this season, we're talking to commit the goaltending off the top of the show. Absolutely right, and that being Ty Garner's back in town with the Oshawa Generals having got back from Calgary, just matter of fact yesterday, I believe. And Derek Dolson is starting in goal tonight for the Oshawa Generals. And Derek has been carrying the load for the Generals in Ty's absence and done a great job in goal. They're going to need strong goaltending down the second half if they want to overtake Peterborough and uh, Belleville in the standings. For right now, that means David Riddle's the odd man out in the situation. He's been reassigned to Strathroy to get some more playing time. He has had in some injuries as well. And uh, the Mississauga Ice Dogs, they played very well against the Oshawa Generals Friday night, Joel. Certainly did, and the Mississauga Ice Dogs are a much improved team, although it isn't showing in the win column as of yet. Uh, to have a 3-1 to one score against the Generals is uh, pretty good, I would think. They snapped the shutout with about 14 seconds to go in the game against Oshawa, but definitely they're playing a lot better, as we talked about before, the, before tonight's broadcast. Shots on goal are down a lot, and the defense is a lot better in Mississauga, so over the next few years, they're definitely going to improve, and on Friday night, they showed it when they played fairly well against the Generals, who are a team in real danger of taking Mississauga too lightly tonight after beating the Guelph Storm on Sunday night. Here's a look at the pre-game report. Tonight's game is the second half of a home-and-home -home series of sorts. These two teams met on Friday night of last week when they decided that even though they had never played in the regular season, there would be no love lost on the ice. In the first period, tough guy Adam Niddle high stick Andrew Peters, and payback began early in the second. And it is Niddle and Richard Spence. Spence finally gets the helmet off Niddle, and they're going to stay tangled up like that. You're not going to get too many delivered. Oh, well, Spence had uh, tried to come to the aid of uh, Peters when uh, Niddle and him got into it a little bit, and uh, the referees wouldn't, uh, the lives wouldn't allow it, but uh, well, Spence uh, gets a couple of laps in there early. He's swinging away, Niddle comes back to the left, and uh, down goes Spence. Really progressing along since the arrival of head coach Jim Halton. Middle and, middle and Scott are about to go right at the face-off circle. Middle with a couple of solid lefts. And Scott's right back. And Middle's uh, trying to get him in a headlock. Middle show him a little noogie right. And, uh, nice over the top right and uh, down goes Middle. As far as hockey was concerned, the last place Ice Dogs had all that they could handle with the Gens. Although the score was far from lopsided, Oshawa came away with the victory 3-1. Derek Dolson saw his first OHL shutout slip away with just 14 seconds to go in the hockey game as Daryl Cowan put Mississauga on the board. Also of note in tonight's game, Oshawa native Chris Taylor makes his Civic Auditorium debut as an ice dog. That was a quick, that was a quick look at Chris Taylor, the local boy from Oshawa. We'll have more on him at the intermission. Another local guy from Whitby, Josh Evans, gets the start and goal for the Mississauga Ice Dogs this evening. And we also saw Ad Middle in that footage. Ad Middle's no longer with the team. He was traded at the deadline to the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. That's another look to the, towards the future for the Mississauga Ice Dogs. Them and the Oshawa Generals, they're up next on OHL Primetime. From the Civic Auditorium in Oshawa, it's the Mississauga Ice Dogs and the Oshawa Generals. Hello everybody, Bob Benham with Joel Glant doing obedience at the Oshawa Civic Auditorium tonight where the Mississauga Ice Dogs, the visitors take on the hometown Oshawa Generals. And Joel, I want to thank you and Donald for filling in on Sunday night when I was a little under the weather. I'm not sure where Donald come up with that uh, big word lamenting the Canadian Junior Team loss, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later after the anthem.
like to welcome our viewers in Mississauga tonight who are watching this on Rogers Community TV down there. I hope you folks enjoy the game as much as we do here in Oshawa on Durham Television bringing you this game tonight. As I was talking about, Joel, uh, you and Donald did a great job on Sunday night, and thanks very much. Cold still hanging on a little bit, but we'll try and get through here tonight. Our pleasure, Bob, and you were talking about uh, where did Donald come up with that word lamenting. You didn't know, but he had a thesaurus down between his feet, so uh, that's where that came from. <laughs> Talked a little bit about the uh, starting goaltender off the top. We said that Whippy native Josh Evans would be getting the start. Uh, we were wrong, so we'll admit it right away. It's going to be Nick Foley getting the start for the Mississauga Ice Dogs here tonight, so a little bit of... Uh, the goaltending change, well, not a goaltending change, but as far as what we said is concerned, so Nick Foley will be getting the start. Something different from what was posted in the uh, in the office downstairs prior to game down in the uh, press room. They did show that Josh Evans would be the starting goaltender tonight, but obviously something's happened, and, and Nick Foley's in net, and as we mentioned off the top, Derek Dolson, who's filled in more than admirably, doing a great job in uh, goal for the Oshawa Generals, and now the Ty Garner's back in town. I'm sure Ty will be expected to see the bulk of the action, but uh, Derek has played well enough during a start here again tonight. Yeah, he sure has played well, and there's a look at Ty Garner on the bench right now, just in from Calgary, probably either a little bit tired or jet-lagged or whatever happens when you uh, fly in from a city that's a couple hours out of your time zone. But Derek Dolson has played extremely well over the last uh, couple of weeks in Ty Garner's absence. The Generals 4-1 uh, since New Year's, so they're playing very well, and uh, Derek Dolson has been a big reason for that. Of course, the flip side of this is David Riddle, the other General's backup goaltender, has been assigned to Strathroy. Probably a, a move I would think that wouldn't last very long. When Ty Garner gets back in between the pipes, I would think we'll see Derek Dolson go to the Oshawa Legionnaires where he'll see a lot more playing time. Yeah, absolutely right. Now, one of those big players missing tonight and hasn't been back in the lineup since returning from King, Team Canada is Brian Allen, number 77. Yeah, Brian Allen has been given a few days rest is what they're calling it. And against uh, one of the teams that's a little bit lower in the standings uh, in the Mississauga Ice Dogs, they're going to give Brian Allen one more day's rest and have him ready to play the Peterborough Peets on Thursday. Play just underway, and Oshawa has the puck now at center as they come up over the blue line. Kazoris with a shot on that and an easy save in there for Foley to get this game underway. Not a bad crowd in attendance for a Tuesday night here in Oshawa. Again, this... The weatherman not helping out with snow. It seems like that's all we've said since a week ago Sunday is snow. Yeah, it's been snowing for a good week and a half straight. You're right. And uh, it was an interesting choice of lines to start the game for the coaching staff of the Generals. We had John Kazoritz with Andrew Peters and Ian Corville. Of course, Corville and Kazoritz, a couple of rookies on the General who John Goodwin has shown a ton of confidence in. Uh, Kazoritz has played a big part in the Generals' 4-1 and one start to the new year. Face-off deep in the Mississauga zone. Kazoris in there wins the face-off, gets it back, but it slides it over to the blue line all the way back in the Oshawa zone, and Baxter will chase it down. Baxter in behind his own net, being watched there by Calverta. Number 24, clear to the far side for Peters. Peters up over to blue line. Up through the center ice area, carries in along the far board. He's being watched on the far side by Ancuda. Number 8, back to the point to Gillies. He winds up for a shot and a good save in there by Foley. Kazoris in there doing some... Four checking Peters in there again. He's in there against number 24, Calvert, as he clears it out over the blue line. Baxter out there with Gillies on the points for the Oshawa Generals to start this first period. Cleared back up, and Calvert there to intercept. Gillies there brings it up over center now and gets it back deep into the Mississauga zone. Foley will hold it up behind his own net, and both teams get a change of players. Calvert clears it up along the near boards, unable to pick it up there with Theobald, number 19. But Page clears in and clears it back out over the blue line, picked up by Mississauga in the center ice area. Coglin on the far side clears it up. Third intercept is Colley, number 16, the leading point getter on this Oshawa Generals team, and Scott there to clear it back in. And we've seen a bit of a shakeup in this, uh, what was the primary unit with uh, Ralph out there with Govro and Colley, and now. Uh, We've got uh, Scott out there now playing with him, Joel. Yeah, John Goodwin has been changing things up a little bit on the big line as of late, just trying to get some offense sparked. Page breaks through, gets a pass away, and a shot there, and it's saved there by Dolson. Just comes out front, Dolson down again to cover it up. Go over there, couldn't get it underneath his pad. Mississauga in there to pick it up. Oshawa on the far side, Page, good playoff escape to get it back in. Scott on the far side now, banks it off the boards and out the center. Jen's got away with one there as Teobald was trying to get a shot on goal. Mike Rusenstrom pulled him down right in front of the referee, and there was no call on that one, so got away with a little uh, trip there in front of their own goal. Passmore clears it back down inside the ice dog zone, and back to pick it up is number three in there. That's Danny Armstrong. Armstrong able to clear it up on the boards. The Wiseman clears it back inside his own blue line, and brought back out now by Fowler. And the Wiseman gets a shot on it, an easy save in there by Dolson as he clears it into the corner. McMillan there played one off the referee's back, and now it's back in the deep in the Oshawa zone. Try to get it off the boards, but Mississauga there to intercept on the far side. 
Wiseman in front, unable to get the shot away as Ralph gets back now to pick it up and clear it up along the near boards. Oshawa having a little bit of trouble getting up, but Upton now has it at center. Being watched by Zubik as he goes in, an easy shot in there, and Foley holds it for another faceoff with 17-14 to go in the score of this first period. Shots 3-3, and none of them have been real dangerous at this point, Joel. Not so far, but uh, good end-to-end -end action so far in this game. Mississauga with a couple of chances, weren't able to convert on them. Derek Dolson had to uh, make a couple of uh, saves there. As you said, nothing too spectacular. Let's look at some of the fans here tonight. You can see the empty seats around them. But as you said, for a snowstorm in town, and once again, as has has been the case every night, and uh, Tuesday night game here at the Civic, definitely good to see some of the people making the trip out to see the Generals play. The ruin there for Oshawa to face off against Cowan. Oshawa win the faceoff, get it across from the far side to Gillies. Shot goes in just wide of the net. The Ruin there doing some four checking. Bucktooth in there as well. Bucktooth in behind the Mississauga net. Being watched in there by Davis. Ice Dog's able to pick it up and clear it out the center. Picked up by Cowan as he comes in over the General's blue line. Gets a shot on net and an easy save for Dolson and cleared into the far corner. Bucktooth chasing his man along the far boards and picked up by Mississauga and cleared back in. Gillies there now trying to get out. Ran into his own player. Coulter now at center ice, unable to get any worse. Brandon back Coulter. In. Go ahead. Sorry. Brandon Coulter making his first start. He was out for a few games with a uh, sore shoulder, and this is the first time we've seen him play in a while, and he's always a spark plug in the Generals lineup. Peters up to Gazoris, and he couldn't get any place intercepted there by Claire. Back in his own zone there to... Kurek who clears it up. Oshawa have it outside the blue line and Peters clears it back in. Peters in there to do some forward checking. Gazoris unable to do anything when Teobald brings out the puck. Now number 19 gets it up to Page. Number 9 comes it over to blue line. Unable to get anywhere. Demet off there to clear it off the far boards for Gazoris. I know Peters picks it up. Gazoris trying to get around his man on the far side. Unable to get around Coglin. Being watched over on the far side by Kurek. Kazoris trying to come out in front of the net. Good work there by the defenseman from Mississauga to carry them back in the corner. Brought back out by Page in the far side. Up to Teobald. Pass goes cross ice. We're going to have an icing call here. Nope. Teobald got back in there. Good job by the Ice Dogs to get in and negate that icing call. Oshawa able to get the puck outside their own blue line down the center. That'll call for another change of players. Coglin back to pick it up. That's Armstrong, sorry, number three, clears it all the way back down, and there's McMillan back for Oshawa to pick it up behind the icing line, off the glass and out the center, back down in the ice dog zone. Blake Ward chases down for the ice dogs in behind the zone. That is Gover is out there to forecheck him. Lou Dickinson with that puck now as he comes in over the blue line, unable to get around Spence on the far side. Baxter chases his man into the corner. Ice Dogs keep that puck in the far side. Dickinson clears into the corner, but there to pick it up is McMillan. Up here to Colley along the near boards, and he'll bring it out to Garro. Nice cross-ice pass on the far side to Scott. He gets a shot right on, and Foley goes down, and he's not taking any chances, and he'll bring it on her face off deep in the Ice Dog zone with 14.40 to go here in the first period. A scoreless first period. Shots very light, 4-3 to three at this point. The shots on goal may not indicate it, but the Ice Dogs have been doing a great job of keeping the Generals back on their heels. Definitely quick on the forecheck and uh, keeping the puck in the General zone quite a bit so far here tonight. As you said, 14.40 to go in the first, and uh, Oshawa has had some trouble assembling any order as far as offense is concerned. Let's see what they can do with Ralph and Passmore out there and uh, Upton on this forward unit. Gillies gets that puck in the far side, gets it back to back. To point later, deflection in front by Peters. Puts Oshawa in front, one nothing. On a shot from Gillies, and Peters got a stick down to deflect it in. I believe it was Brad Ralph in front who got his it's stick down. It was uh, a good shot from the point, and the Ice Dogs defenseman failed to get the stick of Brad Ralph lifted up, but uh, definitely good presence of mind to keep the stick on the ice. And there you have it. The puck bounces off it and gets into the far corner on Foley. Thanks for picking me up on that, Joel. You're right, it was Brad Ralph, number 21 in there, deflecting that shot in from the point from Gillies, and a nice goal to put Oshawa into a 1-0 lead, 14.35 to go here in the first period. Well, we've got an injury right off the, uh, off the face, off pass, where it looks like he took a high stick. Not sure who the guilty party is, but uh, somebody from the Ace Dogs will be going off here shortly. Looks like number 26 is going to the penalty box. He's at the wrong door. 
Well, it's Chris Taylor, and he's an Oshawa native, so he's going to the Oshawa Generals uh, penalty box area. <laughs> the guy, he's got to sit in the Mississauga box. A little he's, homesick, maybe. Well, it could be. So Chris Taylor in the penalty box for two minutes or less, depending on what the uh, Generals do here on this power play. But uh, Calder took a high stick right off the faceoff. Actually, we didn't even catch it on the replay. It would have passed more. It took it so quick. It was very quick. Ralph out there now with Peters and Upton on this forward unit on the power play with Baxter and McMillan on the points. Jens clear it deep in as Ralph goes in to pick it up along the near boards. Power play for the Generals running at 26.9 in the OHL. That's fourth. Not a bad record at all. Ralph gets it across in front. Shot there goes wider than that. McMillan over in the far corner to pick it up. Andrew Peters has been great on the power play as of late creating traffic in front of all the opposing goaltenders and he's doing so again tonight. Ralph gets that shot in and I'm not sure who deflected this one in front. Now that looked like it could have been Peters. Well it was either Peters or Daryl Upton and not unlike the Sunday night's game against Guelph, as soon as I mentioned that Andrew Peters is creating some havoc in front of the goaltender, he deflects one in and as I said it was either Andrew Peters or Daryl Upton in front. Both of them were there and we'll see here on the replay who gets the stick down on this one. Baxter gets it away but it looked like it may have been Upton in front deflected. We'll have to wait till the uh, official announcement. Well, we'll see if uh, Pat Smala has any better eyes than we do because I couldn't tell which one of them got the stick down on that. Well, in any event, that uh, was a quick power play goal. That put Oshawa into a 2-0 lead with 14.03 to go here in the first period over the Ice Dogs from Mississauga. Kurek has that puck in his own zone, tries to flip it out. Gets as far as the blue line, brought out the rest of the way. Tiball trying to get through the middle, but he was intercepted. Brought back in by Coglin. Peters did get the deflection on that goal, Joel. Shot on goal, Aaron Dolson goes down to block that. Keep the score 2-0 in favor of the Oshawa Generals as Page and Upton have words here in the near circle for Rusenstrom, number six. Jim Baxter picks up his uh, second assist and as many goals here tonight. And Andrew Peters, as I said, doing some... Uh, doing some havoc in front of the, the goaltender Nick Foley and gets a stick down on the ice, a big guy. Also uh, playing the power play for the Generals quite often you'll find is Richard Scott, number 23. He's another guy that likes to get some traffic in front. So at the beginning of the year you and I were commenting quite frequently on the fact that the Generals just weren't getting the traffic there to deflect the point shots and uh, now they're doing so and it shows them as their power play improves. Into an early 2-0 lead, Ilya Demidoff with that puck behind his own net. Circles out, he's being watched there by Wiseman. Gorville now with that puck at the blue line, carries it in, unable to get the shot away as he was taken out of the play there by Curic. Colley in there now, and Foley holds it up for another faceoff deep in the Ice Dogs' end. Some of the scratches tonight for the Oshawa Generals. T.J. Reynolds is out, Vladimir Repneff number 22, and of course we mentioned uh, Brian Allen still out with a nagging injury from the Team Canada junior team, and uh, Brandon Cullen out of the lineup tonight. And for the Mississauga Ice Dogs, number five, uh, Phil Vandenbuchel is out along with... Uh, Number 11, Drew Felder, 12, Mark Jarrett, and number 15, Sebastian Savage. So those are the scratches in tonight's lineup. And one addition, number 22, Nick Jones, to the Mississauga Ice Dogs lineup. Cleared by Davis along the far board. Spence just kept it in for a minute, now brought back up by the Ice Dogs. Taylor clears it deep into the zone. McMillan off the boards for Colley, unable to get it out. No, Taylor there to intercept, but Gover picked it up again. Gover up to Colley as he comes in over the blue line. Drops it back to Gover and gets a high shot away, and that goes over the net. Up on the boards on the far side. Brought back down by Taylor. He gets that shot deep in the Oshawa zone. McMillan takes a good hit in there. Colley stripped of the puck. Played that kind of nonchalant. Almost cost him. Colley gives the puck away again for the second time in a row. Ice Dogs trying to get it out in front. McMillan fighting for that puck behind his own net, picked up by the Ice Dogs as they try to get it out in front, and Dolson's going to hold it against the side of the net for a faceoff. Mississauga, a different team than we saw early in the uh, season, in the uh, preseason uh, here, Joel, and of course they had a coaching change partway through the season, and Donald S. Cherry brought in one of his good old Kingston boys, as you might like to say, and uh, there's certainly been a difference in the team, although it hasn't shown in the standings. But offensively it, it, and de defensively, anyways, they've started to cut down on the shots on goal on net, and the goals have not been coming as fast and furious as they first were either. It's definitely been a change for the better as the team grows and gels as the season goes along. And as I said off the top of the show, this is going to be a team that will uh, make the right improvements. So they've got a good management in place, and I think over the next few years you'll see them become a strong team in the OHL. Oshawa clearing that puck deep into the Ice Dog zone, but the Ice Dog's able to clear the zone. 
Cleared out on the far side by Hartz. Unable to carry it in. Oshawa there to pick it up. Andrew Peters goes back up through center. Unable to control the puck. Picked up along the near boards by Wiseman. He's unable to get anywhere as Peters picks it back up and drops it off to Corville. Mississauga with that puck now in their own zone. Bring up the Wiseman. Clears it, Peters clears it back in, and that'll bring about a change of players for the Oshawa team. Zor clears up on the far side for Wiseman. He'll clear in and get a change of players for the Ice Dogs. Rusenstrom in on the far side. Password coughed up a pass in the middle of his own ice, picked up by the Ice Dogs in there. Theobald goes in to pick up number 19. Theobald unable to get any worse as he was jammed in against the boards behind the net. Demidoff carrying back up. Lydia Demidoff in the strange waters in the offensive zone. Gets the puck out in front and unable to get it clearly out in front for a good shot. The Ice Dogs break back out. Theobald up here against Ralph. Doing a good job of backing Demidoff. Well, he got caught up in the offensive zone, and that's what you need your wingers to do is to back up the defenseman. Delayed offside here against the Ice Dogs. Well, Demidoff circles around, and he took too long, so that'll bring about a stoppage in play with 10.49 to go here in the first period. Well, the shots on goal remain close, 7-6 to six in favor of the Generals. And, of course, uh, up on the scoreboard where it really counts, the Generals still leading 2 to nothing here in the first period. We're talking about the Mississauga Ice Dogs being a much-improved team, and... Uh, you compare them to a team like uh, the Barry Colts, who were an expansion club just about four years ago, and uh, four years ago, and you look at them now making a run at the Memorial Cup and a big blockbuster trade over the last couple of days, which we'll talk about in a moment, Bob. Absolutely, they were certainly looking to uh, get to the Memorial Cup with the trade they made with the Toronto St. Mike's, and you mentioned we'll talk about that a little later when we have time, but uh, quite a trade. Well, I'll stop it and play now. I'll go ahead and talk about it. Go right it. ahead. The uh, Toronto St. Michael's Majors, of course, uh, a team that's looking to rebuild and build for the future right now, went ahead and sent uh, Sheldon Keith, Mike Jefferson, and Ryan Barnes, along with Sean Cation to Barry. And in turn, they picked up Adam Delu, Keith Delaney, Daryl Bootland, Brad Pierce, and Kevin Parfrey. So uh, a lot of names in there. But, of course, the big deal is that Toronto St. Michael's Majors send their entire first line of Sheldon Keith, Mike Jefferson, and Ryan Barnes to the Barry Colts, who are definitely shoring up the offense for the run at the Memorial Cup. You'd have to wonder what Mark Napier was thinking when he made that trade. Well, building for the future, and it's tough when you're doing that to let go of a rookie who leads the league in scoring named Sheldon Keefe. Zubik on the far side, clears it back down inside the gym zone. No icing as it could have been played. Spence back to touch it up. Clears it in the corner for Bucktooth as Zubik goes in to check him. Fowler in there to do some forechecking as well, but brought back out by the Gens. Drew up over the blue line with Coulter. Clears it around behind the Ice Dogs net. And Cooter over on the far side to pick it up, and he just missed a check from Richard Scott, number 23, who had him lined up all the way. Coulter up here along the near side for Govro. He's unable to get anywhere, so it's picked up by Davis. Davis over on the far side for Ancuda. He clears it off the board. It's the linesman in the shins. Actually, he lost sight of the puck. It may have went over the boards and out of play. And I'm sure the linesman is saying, please watch where you're shooting that puck. <laughs> I think it cut him right. It came up pretty high on him and uh, just close to where he doesn't want to get hit with a puck, but it ended up just on the uh, ledge of the boards there at the Mississauga bench. Talk about Friday's game a little bit. Richard Scott, of course, had a run in with Adam Niddle, as did Richard Spence of the Generals, and uh, Adam Niddle no longer with the team. Mississauga is still a very tough team. You wouldn't want to uh, try and take any liberties with some of their better players or their younger players because they'll uh, back them up off the drop of the hat, and uh, definitely Richard Scott's out there providing a physical presence for the Generals tonight. We'll have to see if they try and take any liberties in the absence of Adam Niddle. Calverda on the far side clears it back into the Oshawa zone. Dolson out there to stop it behind the net, leaves it in there for McMillan. Her Baxter clears up on the far side, but Calverta there to intercept. Jens bring it back out over the blue line. Collie up through center and over the blue line. Gover going for the middle of the net, tried to get the pass through and unable to get a stick on it was Gover. It was Richard Scott in there now to do some forechecking. Gover gets it out for Collie. He's wide open. Shai scores! Kevin Collie wide open in the slot. Well, a nice pass in front to uh, Kevin Colley. I failed to pick up who exactly passed the puck out, but I believe it was uh, Richard Scott down in the far corner. And uh, Kevin Colley just puts a nice shot in on Nick, down on Nick Foley, who uh, had a little trouble with it. We'll take a replay here and see if he was screened at all on the shot. But watch Richard Scott doing some great forechecking. And it wasn't uh, Scott, it was Govro who picked up the puck down there in the end, found Colley up front, and just put a better shot past Nick Foley than he could handle. I think uh, Nick probably wishes he had that shot back because he just blew that one. 
Yeah, probably uh, he would tell you first that he'd like to have that one back. It wasn't a spectacular shot from Kevin Colley, but uh, those ones get past goaltenders. We've seen it happen to the Oshawa goaltenders uh, quite a few times this year, and they always tell you, you know, I'd love to have those pucks back. So the Jens into a 3-0 lead with under nine, just under nine minutes to go here in the first period. Corville back inside his own zone to pick it up for the Jens. Rusenstrom on the far side now will try and clear it out. Gets it off the boards, but uh, not out. Now he gets it out on a second attempt. Curry clears it back on this far side for number six, Coughlin. Jens pick it up at center ice. Peters over to Kazoris. Kazoris in the corner, unable to get any worse. Peters doing some good work on this four check as he goes to the ice. Corval unable to get the shot away as the puck just skipped over his stick, and Demidov takes a shot that just goes wider than the net. Kazoris taken down heavily behind the net there on a check. At number 23, Ivan Kurek. Kurek now up along the near boards. Clears it in on Dolson. Rusenstrom back to pick it up as he gets it up along the near boards for Corville. He was unable to control that pass. Rusenstrom on a second attempt, still unable to clear it out. Davis winds up for a shot, and that goes about four feet wide of the net. Passmore now on the far side, breaks out by himself, one on two. Gets a shot on that, and Foley makes the save. Ice Dog's unable to clear it back out. Passmore in there to do some four checking against Dan Kuda, number eight. McMillan along the near boards, unable to keep it in. As ball breaks out. Claire taken into the boards at center ice as the Gens pick it up and clear it back down inside the Ice Dog zone with 7.27 to go. Passmore over to intercept now. Ralph out there, unable to do anything with it. Upton goes in to help him out. Upton with control of that puck in the far corner. Trying to get somebody loose to give that puck to. Cleared back in on the far side by Spence. Back into Passmore. He does a good job to avoid that check. McMillan open over here at the point. Comes out in front and Foley's going to get down and smother this up. Avoid any other scoring opportunities. Look like we may have something breaking out here between Claire and uh, Coulter in the corner. That's uh, Claire down there for the Mississauga Ice Dogs. And now I believe that's Richard Scott who is, uh, or it's Brad Ralph who's come over to help out for the Generals. But that was Brian Passmore in there who was uh, pushing and shoving with Claire and he didn't want to get into anything. Probably not one of the most prominent fighters on the Generals is Brian Passmore, but some pushing and shoving in the corner. We probably haven't seen the last of it here tonight. On the save that uh, Nick Foley made, it was one of those ones where the puck sort of came to him. He knew he had to cover it, but he saw a couple of players coming, so he just went down and put his head down, and those ones are tough for goaltenders who just come a little bit out of the crease, and uh, you know it's tough when these guys are 200 pounds coming in skating full <laughs> tilt at you. Absolutely right. So both players going off on coincidental minors, probably two minutes each for intimidating uh, fighters. Good look there at Cowan, number 14, as he goes off for the Ice Dogs and the General's mascot. Well, the General's mascot's there, but there's another guy beside him. It looks like it says his name's Mr. Heckle. He's got a megaphone and a mask on. He looks like something out of WCW. <laughs> First time I've seen him in attendance here at the <laughs> Same here. General's games. Uh, maybe the Ice Dogs brought him along. He's uh, well, that could be. heckling the uh, General's mascot, named uh, newly named Scooter. Scooter as opposed to Shooter. Wait a minute. Is it Shooter? I thought it was Shooter. You <laughs> I, told me Shooter before the game. Know. It's Shooter. <laughs> I, I called him Scooter. <laughs> He's going to duke it out with me after the game now. General's unable to keep it in at the blue line as it's cleared back down the ice Scooter. by Cowan. It's Scooter on the brain. <laughs> Puck cleared back out by the Oshawa. General's down inside the Mississauga Ice Dogs blue line back there to pick it up his oar. Or behind his own net. Out there with Armstrong on the points. Wiseman now with that puck inside his own blue line. Falls just as he comes out over the blue line and there to pick it up is Coulter. Coulter tries to go around the defense but not able to get it out in front. Talked about Brandon Coulter before. He's very good at cutting from the outside and getting in with the puck. And uh, he tried to do it there and he was foiled by the defensive work of the Ice Dogs. Cleared in on the far side by Dickinson. Wiseman in there to do some four checking with the Jens there to pick it up and clear it back down the ice. Now, I must have missed something on the penalties because the uh, Generals is the only penalty on the board up there. Well, it would be the extra two minutes gone to uh, Brad Ralph and Brian Passmore were in the box. So the coincidentals went to Passmore and Claire. And then when Brad Ralph jumped in, he got the extra two for the roughing. So the Generals remain uh, shorthanded for the extra two. Back down to pick it up inside his own zone is Ancuda. And behind his own net. 
And Kuda pass on the far side, cleared up, picked up by the Ice Dogs and cleared back down. This could be icing if the Gens get to it first. Demidoff took the long way around, but with that long reach of his, he was able to get to the puck first, and that's an icing against the Mississauga Ice Dogs. Well, I couldn't see through the net, but when you said that, I took a look down, and I thought Teobald had gotten there first, but uh, nonetheless, the icing has been called, so I guess, as you said, Demidov's long reach got around the net before Teobald did. A little bit surprised on the whistle there. Good look there, Kevin Colley, number 16. Currently ninth in the Ontario Hockey League in scoring is Kevin Colley. He's played very well. Of course, trying to show that uh, the U.S. team had no business cutting him before the World Juniors camp, but he's played very well since then and, uh, of course, all season long. Shots at this point, 9-7 in favor of the Oshawa Generals, so uh, scoring on one every three shots so far. Could be a long night for the Ice Dogs. Shot in on Dalton, unable to control the rebound as it's brought back out front, but there was McMillan to clear it away. Cleared it back down the ice. Close call there to the Oshawa Generals end. Or back to pick it up behind his own net for the Ice Dogs. Well, it's been a while since we've seen number four Orr behind the net here at the Civic Auditorium. That's right. Orr clears it up on the far side for number 24, Nathan Calverta. Right back in, and the shot goes high. Shot taken in there by Cowan. Tried to go to the high side, but he couldn't hit the net. Colley picks it up now, brings it back out for Ralph. Over to Scott. Scott in for Ralph. Colley over in the corner now to try and pick it up. Colley circles around, lays it off for Baxter. Baxter tries to get the shot across in front, just goes wide of the net. Or on the far side to pick it up. Ice Dogs clear up back down the ice. Back in to pick it up as Gillies for the Generals. Gillies off the near boards for Upton. Out there with Ralph and Scott on the far side as Ralph goes off for a change. Scott behind the net, picked up by Wiseman to the Ice Dogs along the near boards. Up there to intercept that pass and clear it back in. Calder out there tries to get around. He does try to cut that net awful short. Calder still with control of that puck, trying to get it out in front, but a smart play there by Foley to intercept that pass and knock it back in the corner. Scott on the far side, unable to do anything. Ice Dogs having trouble getting out of their own zone. Ice Dogs with that puck inside their own zone. Keurig now over on the far side to Coglin. Coglin unable to get anywhere. It's against the four checking of the Generals. Kazoris gets it in for Upton. He tries to get it through. Cleared back up by the Ice Dogs and picked up by Demidoff inside his own blue line. 3.25 to go in the first period. 3-0 in favor of the Oshawa Generals. Govro in number 28. He's in there against Davis. Lays a good hack on him. Andrew Peters in behind the net. Being watched by Coglin on the far side. Gets it back to Govro, who couldn't pick it up. Ice Dogs cleared high off the glass and back out the center. Demidoff there to pick it up, and he hits Peters on a break in from the blue line. Peters goes in, goes through a five hole and scores. Andrew Peters on a nice play in a five hole. Well, Andrew Peters picks up a loose pocket in the uh, neutral zone. Just a little bit of a burst of speed to get away from the defenseman. But uh, Nick Foley had trouble with that one, and I'll probably explain why, is that the puck was rolling, and that's as tough for the uh, forward to contain it and get a good shot away as it is for the goaltender. It's kind of like a knuckler coming in, and he doesn't know which way Peters is going to shoot. Peters doesn't know which way Peters is going to shoot because the thing's up on its side. And uh, he just did sort of tip in a backhand and got the five hole on Nick Foley, who's had trouble so far tonight. Just a 11 shots on goal, and it's 4 nothing here for the Generals. So it could be a long night for uh, Nick Foley as well. Andrew Peters, a smart play there, too, to protect the puck from the guy that was trying to knock it off him. He got the leg out there and uh, protected the puck, and he was able to maintain control of that rolling puck and put it through the five hole for a 4 0 lead with just under three minutes to go here in the first period. Morrison gets a shot and fully able to get the glove out and make that save. Pushing and shoving now with uh, Ancuda and Andrew Peters down there in the goal area. Should see cooler heads prevail. Now, Bob, I was thinking about the Mississauga Ice Dogs a little bit today and talk about the NHL and the, the West Division or the Western Conference having the tough travel schedules as compared to the teams in the East. And here in the OHL, you would have to think the Generals being in the Eastern Division, every time they leave, they either go to Peterborough, Ottawa, Belleville, or Kingston every time they play a division rival. Every time Mississauga leaves their building for a weeknight game, they get Toronto rush hour traffic. That's got to be a pain <laughs> in the butt for not only their bus driver, but the team sitting That's on the right. bus. That's right, and coming here to Oshawa tonight, I'm sure they were through rush hour traffic again, but hopefully they would know that and leave, uh, try and get ahead of it. But uh, I'll tell you, the way traffic's been lately with all this snow we've been having, you, you never know what time to leave. 
Nice dog clear back in. Puck on the far boards. Bucktooth over there to pick it up. Gets it up through center. Intercepted there. Third back in by Jones. Back in the ice dog zone. Or in there to pick that up now. Bucktooth on the far side to do some four checking. He's in there against Taylor. Kohler gets it back out front, but intercepted there by Calverta. Passmore gets it over to the blue line, but it comes out. We've got a delayed penalty coming here to the Ice Dogs as the referee's got his hand up. Well, I'm a little bit surprised because the Generals had control of the puck. Yeah, I don't understand this call. Jeff McMillan... Uh, oh, well, I think Kohler just got himself a misconduct. Well, he sure did, and uh, John Goodwin is livid over at the bench. He can't get a word in edgewise for Sorella yelling at the linesman. But Pat Small has come over here. He's just assessed Brandon Coulter with a misconduct penalty because he wouldn't stop complaining about it, but uh, he didn't give him very long. He must have said something a uh, little bit uh, off. Uh, Ungentlemanly-like? Uh, yeah, that's a good word for it. <laughs> but nevertheless, what was the whistle blowing for? The delayed penalty was called against the Ice Dogs for slashing. And the next thing you know, uh, Jeff McMillan has control of the puck for the Generals, and the referee blows the whistle. So, uh, as I said, the coaching staff for the Generals is upset about it. Brandon Coulter upset about it, and for his efforts, he's gone for 10-minute uh, misconduct. That's right. Well, he obviously said something the referee didn't like. Baxter carries in over the blue line, deep into the ace dog zone. Baxter in the corner, gets it back to Colley at the point. Gillies on the far side. Baxter cross ice pass to Gillies. He winds up for a shot. That goes wider than that. Page in there to pick it up and clear it back down the ice and kill off some of the time on this penalty. Gillies back to pick it up behind his own net now. Baxter behind his own net. Gets it up to Gobro here on the near boards. Cross ice pass to Colley. He's out there with Scott on the forward line. Nice shot there by Colley and went for the high corner but fully got the arm up. Able to keep it out with 119 to go in the first period, 4 nothing in favor of the Oshawa Generals. Well, Bob, I'm going to have to do some investigative work because I can't for the life of me figure out why the whistle was blown on that play. And it's not so much the, uh, the principal or whatever, it's just it's bugging me now. I want to find out why. But I think simply kind of because the, the Colder said something which obviously precipitated an Oshawa penalty which meant that the play, the Oshawa Generals had control of the puck. The play had to be blown oh, down. See, I thought the uh, misconduct on Coulter was called after the whistle. No, it was called before the whistle. Okay. That was why that whistle went. I saw him look at Coulter immediately. Very strange, very strange. Well, in any event, the Oshawa Generals are on a power play with 119 to go here in the first period. Third back down the ice by the Ice Dogs. Dolson there to hold it up for McMillan as he gets back. Theobald and Calverta out on the forward units. Or Wiseman, number 21. Ralph on the far side. Ralph now with that puck along the far boards. Gets it back to Spence. Back into Ralph. Comes out front. Ralph comes in and gets picks up the pass. And right in the five hole. And there's Foley to make a good save. General's moving the puck well early on the uh, power play here. Well, not so early. 46 seconds to go on the power play to be exact. That's uh, moving the puck well and getting a good scoring chance there on Nick Foley, who's had a tough period here. 4 nothing for the Generals. 46 seconds to go here in the first period. Certainly having a lot more luck tonight uh, with their shots on goal and their scoring opportunities than they did in Mississauga the other night. And maybe they did take Mississauga a little lightly going in there the other night. Could have I mean, very obviously well with the record that they have, it'd uh, be hard not to take them lightly. McMillan with that puck back to the point. Now gets it in. Upton unable to control as it gets into the crease. Upton gets it back to McMillan at the point. Time running out. Spence clears it in for Ralph. Ralph unable to control it. And Kuda over there doing some forechecking against Ralph. Picked up by Colley in the corner. Nobody in front of the net for the Gens. Back to Spence. Back into Colley. That's Passmore. It gets it out front. Right along the side of the net. Foley had the pad down, couldn't get it in. Upton now chasing that puck on the far side. Upton trying to kill some time. Gets it across in front and they score! Oh, I believe that was Brian Passmore on the doorstep who got his stick on the puck, and I don't know how he did it because he was tied up. The Ice Dog defensemen were, uh, were doing a, a pretty good job considering they had all they could handle with the Generals' forecheck on that power play, and they were trying to give 
Nick Foley a little bit of room to see the puck, and uh, this time we had Brian Passmore waiting on the doorstep, and a nice pass across here to find him, and he just sort of taps it home, but uh, number 25 there for the Ice Dogs had a little bit of trouble containing him, and Brian Passmore gets a deflection. 5 nothing Generals here in the first period. Andrew Davis obviously playing a little light on Passmore, and Passmore was able to get a stick free and get that puck in. A little bit of discussion between Scott Page and Andrew Peters here as they await the drop of the puck. They're going to send Brandon Coulter over to the General's dressing room with three seconds to go here. He's serving a 10-minute misconduct, so they don't want him in the penalty box when the Ice Dogs are coming across to leave for their dressing room, so they'll send him in early. I'm sure John Goodwin will have something to say to uh, Brandon Coulter for taking that needless 10-minute uh, misconduct as uh, the buzzer goes to end the first period. And I guess if you're an Oshawa Generals fan, you'd have to say a very good period. Five goals, Joel. Certainly would. The offense has come in uh, completely intact. And as you said, there's a danger of taking the Ice Dogs a little bit lightly, and that's probably what happened on Friday night. Having said that, the Oshawa Generals came off a heartbreaking loss to the Barry Colts for the Thursday prior in overtime. So they came out and played uh, fairly well on Friday night. You would have thought that they would have come out a little bit stronger. But tonight here, they certainly have come out. And Nick Foley's had a few pucks that he probably would have liked to have back. Interesting. Uh, maybe, hopefully, we might be able to find out a little later why the change in goaltending plans as opposed to having uh, Josh Evans start instead of Nick Foley, as was scheduled in the press room before the game. But Foley's probably wishing now that uh, Evans was in goal after that first period. Yeah, he certainly is, and uh, probably the fans here would have liked to see Josh Evans, a Whippy native in goal, if he's got any family around this area. And uh, having said that, they're probably here wanting to see him play and thinking that he was getting the start. But, uh, you know, those are plans change in hockey, and this is the way it's going tonight. That's what happens. Well, anyways, the score at the end of the first period, the Oshawa Generals 5, the Mississauga Ice Dogs no score. Just to reminder, stay tuned for Donald Beattie and his interview with Scott Page, number 9, from the Ice Dogs. And you're watching OHL Primetime on Durham Television and in Mississauga on Rogers Community TV. TV. Scott Page, captain of the Mississauga Ice Dogs, joins me here in the first period. And Scott, a lot of the fans at home and the people in the rink may be thinking, here we go again with the Mississauga Ice Dogs, but really this is not the indicative of the way the team's been playing lately. Yeah, we've been starting to pick up our game, and tonight we came out pretty strong. Uh, and again, we're taking penalties that are killing us. You know, when uh, we get in the box, they get their five best players on the ice, and, and that's when we struggle when they have their best players on the ice. But I thought we came out hard tonight. We're down five now, but we just got to keep coming out strong. You met the same Oshawa general team Friday night. The score was a final 3-1 to one for Oshawa in their favor. But, uh, the shots on goal were a heck of a lot uh, They're closer than the team has been lately. Uh, it's got to be a real pressure off the goaltenders' backs knowing that you've got the shots on goal down as well. Well, our goalies have kept us in all year long. You know, they've made the games close that could be close. And Friday night was a great example. It was 3-1 with a team that we felt we could play with. And they made, it, they made us feel like we could play. You know, we had a... 25 shots in the second period and the goaltender was hot and we just ran into a hot goaltender on a night that we, we wanted to win. Did you have a lot of confidence coming here this evening considering you played Oshawa so well on Friday night? Yeah, we, we didn't feel it would be an easy task at all, but we thought, you know, we can play with these guys. They're still missing their best player, Brian Allen, in our lineup. And we knew that we had a chance with uh, to go in and maybe steal two points. Is it going to take a little bit of time to adjust to life without Adam Niddle? Adam Niddle is a great uh, part of our team, you know, but picking up Nick Jones, he's helped us out a lot. He, he brings the same physical uh, present, maybe not as much offense, but uh, it was a key loss to lose Adam, but, you know, it's, it's part of the game. There's been a lot of changes throughout the season, and uh, one of those is Coach Jimmy Halton coming in and uh, taking over the reins uh, behind after Peter Sturgeon was dismissed by the club. What changes for the positive you've seen since he took over? Well, Jimmy came in here and he had a tough job at first. You know, there's not a whole bunch of talent on this hockey club, and we all know that. There's a lot of hard-working hockey players on this team, and that's what makes us what we are. But he's just worked with everybody. He's given everybody a fair chance. And, you know, next year is, is his year. He'll, he'll run the ropes. He'll get the players he wants in here. And, that, and you'll really see the real gym next year. People around the league can often take a look at the standings and uh, might even think of Mississauga, Mississauga Ice Dogs as a bit of a joke. But some of the statistics are actually in your favor. Uh, eighth overall in the league at home on the power play. That's something you've got to be proud of. Yeah, our, player, our power play was, uh, was clicking with Niddle and Dezane here, you know. Now we got to pick up the slack. Uh, Dezane uh, led the rush a lot of the times, but now we're running five rookies, most sometimes getting the second shift. So it's getting tougher now, but we just keep going out there. And we just in this league, you got to score on the power play to be in the game. It's a young team. There's a bright future ahead for the Mississauga Ice Dogs. That's Captain Scott Page.
One of the gentlemen running behind, running the bench behind Scott Page is Dave Anderson. I had a chance to speak to him before the game. Dave Anderson, assistant coach of the Mississauga Ice Dogs, joins us now. And uh, Dave, a lot of the re losses recently have come by one and two goal games. Uh, how tough is that on the team's psyche? Well, right now we have the team uh, working hard and uh, trying to be as competitive as possible. And I, they know what's coming, and it's, uh, it's almost like baby steps, but uh, they're still staying very competitive and trying as hard as they can every day. The team's very young as well. Is it tough as a coach to uh, keep your patience sometimes, knowing that this team is supposed to take a couple of years before everything gels correctly? Uh, actually, no, you have to keep your patience. You have to keep in mind how young the kids are and uh, that uh, it's a, it's a step-building process. And in order to take those steps to move forward, you have to have that patience and, uh, and then just making sure that we keep that desire to win every game. One of the players that was in your lineup until recently, Adam Niddle, wasn't exactly the youngest player. He was uh, probably the oldest on the team, and he's been sent off elsewhere at the trade deadline. Uh, can you tell us what some of the reasons behind Mr. Cherry's decision was? Well, uh, you know, the one thing we wanted to make sure, we wanted to do what's also best for uh, Adam, but also for our organization as well. And I think it was just a good fit between, uh, you know, uh, the Miss Saga Ice Dogs and Adam himself. And, uh, you know, it's going to bring uh, a lot of positive things to our, our organization in the future. When Peter Sturgeon was let go as the head coach of the team and uh, Tim Holt and yourself took over coaching duties, since that time, uh, what improvements would you say the team has made? Well, I definitely think uh, what uh, you know, Jim's background and my background, we have a, you know, education uh, through our organization in, the re in regards to um, uh, we both play university hockey, and we're trying to make sure that uh, we're keeping the guys you know, going with their school in, in this type of environment. For the on-ice on uh, performance, I think uh, we, we bring a strong work ethic, uh, you know, both the school and, and also uh, uh, you know, the hockey combined. Uh, we have to make sure the kids stay in school and do well, and then also at the same time play as you know, a strong game as well. It's almost an unrelated issue, but uh, yourself, you attended York, uh, York uh, University. Well, well, Jimmy, well, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy went to. Uh, yeah, I was at, I was at Guelph. Jimmy was at uh, York University, so. Yeah, because you can draw the parallel between the Mississauga Ice Dogs and the, end, uh, the York Yeomans football program, where they went through nearly eight solid years of uh, of winless football. So you can almost draw a parallel between that. Uh, this, once you did take over from Peter Sturgeon, um, what kind of a feeling are you getting from the players on the team? I mean, they come out and they try hard every night. The uh, three to one loss against Oshawa Friday evening. Does that give the team any more confidence coming in here knowing it was once again one of those very close games that they dropped? No, I, I definitely think that uh, like, you know every game that the guys are, are they are competing and, they, and they're keeping that worth ethic up and not only that they're also making sure that uh, they're keeping in sight that the, the, with that work ethic that winning will come sooner or later and you know hopefully for us sooner. There was a point in the season early on when the shots on goal were up to 50 and 60 almost on a nightly basis, and those have been cut down drastically, and that's got to take the pressure off the goaltenders as well. Oh, it definitely does. Uh, you know, we're really concentrating on our defense and making sure that uh, we start from, the, you know, from our zone outwards, uh, working and building this team together. Oh, there's been a lot of press about the team and uh, the penalty minutes they have uh, behind St. Toronto with St. Michael's Major, second most in the league. Do you feel it's almost a bad shake? Uh, no, no, no. You know, we, we've uh, we're, we're starting to really uh, incorporate a, a, a discipline in the uh, in the way we approach our our games. Uh, you know, that's the one thing that we have improved on quite a bit, and just making sure the team's focused. And and you know, if they're going to take a penalty, it's going to make sure it's a good one. But uh, we really want to cut down on stupid penalties. That's for sure. It's Dave Anderson, assistant coach of the Mississauga Ice Dogs. You're watching OHL Primetime on Durham Television and in Mississauga on Rogers Community TV. A score of five to nothing at the end of one period. With the first period overview, here's Bob Benham and Joel Glant. Well, Joel, it took Oshawa a little time to get on track, but at uh, 5:25 of that first period, uh, Brad Ralph with his uh, first goal of the night got the Oshawa Generals uh, underway, got them on the start to this five nothing lead, which they enjoy at the end of the uh, first period. 
Yeah, they've definitely taken it to Mississauga so far after one period of play, doubling them in shots, 18-9. to 9. And, uh, you know, the Oshawa Generals, we've seen night in and night out, got a lot of shots on goal. And tonight, Foley's had a little bit of trouble stopping some of them. So it's paid off for them in the early going. And as you said, Brad Ralph with his first goal of the game, he's been in on two other ones, having a good night as far as points are concerned. And I believe we'll take a look at the first one right here. You see the puck come back to the point, and uh, the shot's going to get thrown towards the net, and the important part is for somebody to get their stick down on it, and uh, Brad Ralph does just that and gets the Generals going early in the first period. No, I thought that was a tip from, well, actually, Gillies did get an assist on that, along with uh, Jim Baxter, number 26, who's uh, quite an offensive-minded defenseman for the Generals this year, and uh, actually, Baxter was also in on the second goal uh, that uh, Peter scored tonight. As was Brad Ralph, and... Uh, he got an assist on that one as well. So it's good to see that uh, the Generals get offense from different places every once in a while, and uh, that's what has to happen on any team that wants to go somewhere in the playoffs or uh, fight for a, a good playoff position in this tough East division. I think that uh, they have to have all four lines contributing, and Brad Ralph has been a guy who's scored a lot of goals this year. Jim Baxter's been in on a lot. But to see guys like Andrew Peters scoring goals, and he's got two tonight, and also uh, Trevor Gillies getting in with an assist, that's important to see, and uh, we'll take a look at one of the other goals here as you see. Brad Ralph give it over to Jim Baxter. When he throws it at the net, it's important that somebody has their stick down, and they certainly does. His name's Andrew Peters. And at the time, we weren't sure whose stick that that went off of. But Peters has been a guy that's been tough to move in front of the opposing uh, goaltenders. He's done a good job on the power play this year. You know, I looked at that replay a number of times during the first period on the other set here, and uh, still hard to tell from that angle whether it was Peters or Upton that deflected that shot in. And, uh, you know, I think off the uh, originally we thought Upton had did score that, but they... Uh, Gave credit to Peters, but I did hear one of the Oshawa Generals uh, executives say he asked both guys, and both guys said, yeah, well, I scored, so <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> who do you believe? Yeah, that's right. But, uh, you know, it was tough to tell, but the puck was closer to Daryl Upton, but at the same time, Andrew Peters has got that big reach, that Dave Anderchuk-style reach, and he definitely did get a stick out there and uh, get a stick on it. Kevin Colley got the uh, third goal for the Generals, and I think that's one of the ones that uh, Nick Foley wishes he, he probably had back was the Colley goal because he was left alone all in front. As you can see here, and this, he just he just misplayed that shot totally, Foley did. He did, and I believe he had enough room to be able to see it. Uh, the defenseman on the play didn't come up in the slot and challenge Kevin Colley at all. He just let him shoot the puck, and uh, that's something that has to be probably addressed by the Mississauga Ice Dogs. They've got to play a little bit more sound defensively, and that's something that will come as the team matures and evolves into a, a better team over the next couple of years. And after Colley's goal, then uh, Andrew Peters scored his second goal of the night. And that one, uh, I'm not sure if that, I don't know, uh, believe that was on a power play, but uh, the Generals have enjoyed a couple of power play advantages here tonight in this uh, first period, one of them which did result in a goal. I believe the Mississauga Ice Dogs are second in penalty minutes to the only to the Toronto St. Michael's Majors so far this year. They do uh, s serve a lot of penalties. Adam Middle probably uh, accounted for a lot of those minutes with all of the fights and whatnot this year. As, a, as we mentioned, he's gone up to Sault Ste. Marie. And the player that's come from the Sioux Greyhounds to the Mississauga Ice Dogs is Nick Jones. He's uh, seen limited ice time tonight. We haven't seen him too much on the ice yet tonight. Well, we're just getting ready. The uh, officials have come back out early for the start of this uh, second period. There's still a little bit of time to go. We'll see this Peters goal here as he breaks in from the blue line. Did a good, did a good job of breaking through there, as you can see, that second goal of Peters. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the start of the second period. You're watching OHL Primetime on Durham Television and in Mississauga on Rogers Community TV. Welcome back, everybody. We're just underway here in the second period. The Oshawa Generals uh, holding a 5-0 advantage over the visiting Mississauga Ice Dogs team. Bob Benham along with Joel Gallant, Donald Beatty, and the rest of our Durham television crew. We hope you people in Mississauga are enjoying this game on Rogers Community TV. Gillies keeps it in at the blue line. Kazora's there to pick it up. Peters has it now. New goaltender to start the second period. Josh Evans in goal for the Mississauga Ice Dogs. I guess Foley's seen enough rubber for one night. Ice Dogs carry that puck back in and cleared back out. Orr has it at center. Orr Armstrong back to Orr and he clears it in. Tipped in by number 22. That's uh, Nick Jones. 
Oshawa fighting for possession along the near boards. Mississauga there to keep it in. Jones does a good job of keeping it in. For Calverta in behind the net, Cazorus picks it up for the Generals. Peters now with that puck at center ice. Is he one on two going up. Peters in over the blue line, gets a shot away, and Evans down to block that shot and hold it for a faceoff. So right away, Evans uh, gets tested here in the second period. Saw him warming up just as the uh, Ice Dogs came out onto the ice, came out a little bit early to warm up their goaltender. As you said, probably Nick Foley had seen enough rubber for one night at that point. 18 shots on goal. The General is on pace to throw uh, 56 shots at the Ice Dogs. So uh, definitely a good idea to have a goaltender. And Donald, Donald S. Cherry in attendance. You get a look at him there on our camera. Don's always popular wherever he goes. Well, I'm surprised there wasn't a lineup of people behind him. Maybe uh, not too many people have noticed he's here yet. Colley try to get that puck out front. Get, tries to swing it out front. Ralph Scott there picks it up and puts it home. So Josh Evans doesn't get much help uh, from his defenseman as uh, Scott picks that up all alone in front and puts it behind him for a 6-0 Oshawa lead early here in the second period. Well, with the teams at regular strength, and there was no need for Richard Scott to be left all alone in front like that. And uh, Richard Scott's been showing some real soft hands as of late. He's put a few on the board. And uh, this one's just uh, bad news for the goaltender, Evans, who comes into the game and, as you said, has no help in front. And Richard Scott's able to get a shot there and puts it in the top corner. Rosenstrom clears it back out through center. Now back down inside the ice dog zone. Could be an icing call. And it is. Zancuda gets back to touch it up. Gover in on that play as well. As you said, Richard Scott has developed some real soft hands in front of that net lately, and maybe it's got something to do, although I'm not that uh, foolish to think it would, but playing on this line, he's developed kind of a bit of a scoring touch lately. Well, Richard Scott's a guy who, uh, he's an overage rookie, which is an interesting story in the Ontario Hockey League. Played hockey in Kujiching last year. This year asked for a tryout. He got it, made the team, and it started by playing with Daryl Upton and Vladimir Repnev, where he scored a couple, and now, as you said, playing on the big line, he's getting on the power play, and he's showing that he can score some goals for you, so he's got sort of a Bob Probert approach to the game. He can put the puck in the net and he fights as well. Upton takes a hit on the far boards but the Jens pick it up. Fence now out through center. Clears it up for Passmore who clears it in on goal. Some of the fans here giving Evans a bit of a hard time. Brad Ralph there to do some forechecking. In there against Dickinson. Ralph picks up that puck, tries to come out of the corner. Still has control of it. Gets a backhand away and goes off a skate into the corner. Passmore in there to pick it up. They're to back in, but intercepted by Dickinson, and he'll try to clear it out for the Ice Dogs. Dickinson out through center. Carries that puck into the Oshawa zone. He's watched by McMillan on the far board. Spence there. Couldn't quite get control of it. The Ice Dogs get that shot away. Or unable to get it all the way through. Dickinson over on the far side. Try to get it back to the point. The Gens are going to clear the zone. Upton takes a hit on the far side and goes down. Good job by Armstrong on the far side. Upton at center clears that puck back in and he'll go off for a change. Bar circles around in his own zone, brings it up with a nice pass up to Calverta. Up to Theobald. Theobald makes him a nice move to get around, leaves it back for Calverta. He couldn't pick it up. Picked up by Jones in the corner. Theobald in there again to do some four check ins. Kazoris watches him. Back to the point to Orr, gets a weak shot away. Baxter. Kind of grabbed it and dropped it and picked up by Kazoris and brought back out. Drew Bucktooth in on the far side as he's watched on the far side by Ancuda. Ice Dogs unable to clear the zones. Gillies keeps it in. Ancuda off the boards down the ice now and this will bring about an icing call. As Baxter gets back to touch it up with 16.35 to go here in the second period. 6-0 in favor of the Oshawa Generals. We see sticks lying all over the ice here, and they were that way for the last minute and a half or so, and it was causing a little bit of havoc down in the general zone. It's a funny story, in the Guelph game on Sunday night, there was a stick down in the corner. The Oshawa Generals fully expected an icing, and as they chased the puck down, it hit the broken stick, bounced back out front where Guelph recovered and ended up scoring a goal. It's one of those things, as Donald Beatty put it, one of those things that happens maybe once every five seasons, but uh, came back to haunt the Generals, and I was a little bit uh, conscious of that with the two sticks lying on the ice in their zone just on the last shift. Oshawa win that faceoff. Demidoff back at the point, clears it in. Coughlin in there to give chase. Clear, unable to break that out as the Oshawa generals do a good job with the blue line of some forechecking. Clear now on the far side as he breaks in. He tries to go around Demidoff. 
Goes around behind the Jens net. Demidov takes him out and Peters picks it up. Peters clears along the far boards. Shot kept in on the far side by Kurek. Corville now brings it out at the blue line. Corville from center clears it deep into the ice dog zone and there's Evans out to stop it. Coughlin up here on the far side for Page and he wasn't able to pick up that pass. So Spence goes back down inside his own zone to pick it up. Spence in behind his own net and there's a water bottle laying off the top of the net down there behind the uh, Oshawa General's end. Or there to intercept that pass, but uh, Page was a little late getting out on the far side, and that'll bring about an offside call. Richard Spence was a little bit surprised on that play as he went back to pick up the puck, thought it was icing, probably because Derek Dolson was indicating to him that it was icing, and the, in fact the linesman had waved it off, so Richard Spence with a look of surprise on his face as he put the puck around the boards, and uh, the Ice Dogs were able to recover, almost turned it into something. Got out with Collie and Bucktooth. Now that's a bit of a different combination. Well, here we got to go in front of us. This is uh, Scott and Zubik, number two. This one right off the faceoff. And they're trying to get the helmets off each other, and the, for that, they're not going to be able to get a fight going. But uh, Richard Scott lands a few good ones as Zubik goes down to the ice, and that was one of those ones where it wasn't a respect for each other. Let's drop the gloves and get our teams going. That was more of a glove in the face, and I'm angry at you. And uh, you know, Richard Scott showed that as Zubik went to the ice and he kept wailing away. I don't think there's any instigator. I don't think there'd be any instigator rule on that. It looked like it was a mutual decision that they both drop the gloves and go at it at the same time. I would say so. Richard Scott got the glove in the face of Zubik and uh, Zubik gave him one back and then eventually the two players dropped the gloves. They spent the better part of the fight trying to get their each other's helmets off and uh, for that they had their arms tangled up and couldn't get anything going as far as the uh, fisticuffs are concerned. But uh, as I said, as Zubik went down to the ice, Richard Scott landed a couple on him. The penalty uh, penalty door at the Oshawa bench is uh, still open. I'm not sure what this is all about. Well, to my surprise, Bob, and probably to yours, Richard Scott has been given two minutes for instigating, as uh, you might be able to tell from the junior referees here in the crowd booing. And uh, Richard Scott now heads over to the general's bench because he's been given a 10-minute misconduct on top of it all. So he's gone to the dressing room now, and John Goodwin's trying to get the referee to come over and talk to him, and that's not going to happen. So Scott will be well-rested for the third period. There's no doubt about that. He sure will. I'm a little bit surprised on that call. I didn't think that uh, Richard Scott had that much to do with starting the fight. It looked like the two uh, combatants were willing, but uh, perhaps before the face-off we saw something, or we didn't see something, I should say, that the referee saw, and that uh, caused Richard Scott to start that. So Ian Corville comes over to sit in the box two minutes for Scott, who's, uh, like Joel has mentioned, has been given a misconduct, so he's uh, gone for the rest of the second period. Part of the early part of the third period too. Collie's in there doing some forechecking on Davis and Kuda over there to take Collie out of the play. Collie doing a good job in there, one on three. Picked up by Ancuda, cleared out on the far side. Collie in there again to pick it up. Collie takes a hit there from Harris. Or Hearts, Sebastian Hearts, number 18. Dickinson with that puck in over the blue line, drops it back to Hearts, but there to Pick him up was Bucktooth as the shot goes high in over the net, comes right out in front. Davis in there, gets a shot away, that just goes wide of the net. Jen's having trouble clearing the zone as Collie's in there to pick it up, just gets it out over the blue line. Davis clears it back in for the Ace Dogs. McMillan on the far side, gets it high, and down the ice. General's doing a good job on the penalty kill. We even saw Kevin Collie go down to block a shot. You don't see that Not every very day. often. As we said with Mr. Cherry in the building, he'd probably be impressed to see one of the forwards going down to block a shot like that on the power play. I'm sure Mr. Cherry's in town to see how some of the European players uh, are playing for the uh, for the Generals, but Repneff's out of the lineup tonight, however, Ilya Demidoff is in the lineup I'm sure tonight. that's exactly why he's here. <laughs> you think not, eh? Back in to pick it up for the Ice Dogs is Danny Armstrong, number three, over to Orr on this side. Orr now goes in behind his own net. Page circles around the top of the circle. Or slowly working his way out. Gets it over to Armstrong on the far side. Theobald with that puck inside the Jens blue line. Tried to get it out in front, but they're intercepting. Clear to clear it back out is Demidoff. Passmore doing a good job at center. Armstrong clears it back in, but uh, Page didn't clear soon enough, so that'll bring about an offside as Corville comes out of the box. 
General still with uh, quite a hefty lead in shots on goal, 21-9 to nine at this point. Having said that, they've only got three shots in the first six and a half minutes here in the, third, or in the second period, rather. So they went into this period with 18 shots, just 21 now, but still out shooting Mississauga 21-9. to nine. Let's take a look at Jim Baxter, the Boston Bruin draft pick. Went to their camp this year, had a good camp. Probably uh, see action with the Bruins Farm Club next year, I would think. Well, he certainly has lots of promise, and we've spoken highly of him on many of our games this year. He's got great uh, offensive prowess out there for a defenseman. And as you know, a good offensive defenseman, they're hard to come by. Taylor with that puck, clears it up now. Taken on the far side over there by Jones, who clears it in. Now we got another fight going in front of the net. This is Trevor Gill. He's a number 24 in there. That's Nathan Calverta from the Ice Dogs. Gillies gets his hand free. Both helmets are off and both guys going at it. Donald S. Cherry is certainly like this, I'm sure. Down goes Calverta. And I think we'd have to give this decision to uh, Trevor Gillies. Well, Gillies uh, landed quite a few more than Calverta. They both threw a lot of punches, and I thought Calverta got a, a couple of good ones in there, but I think we'd have to give the edge to Gillies on, on punches landed if you wanted to judge it that way. But uh, Calverta doing a good job on the forecheck, trying to get in there and create some havoc in front of the net, and Trevor Gillies trying to tie him up, and the two players get jostling, and then next thing you know, the gloves come off, and there you go, and uh, the fans like it, and the benches like it. So see if this will spark the Mississauga Ice Dogs who are down 6 to nothing at this point. Well, see what started. This all seemed very innocently. Just Again, both guys dropped their gloves, and away they went. Let's see if there's any instigator on this one. Who blew the last call? Well, as you know, uh, watching the Generals all season so far, uh, Trevor Gillies isn't too tough to uh, twist his arm into a, <laughs> into a bout. Absolutely not. Five aside for fighting, nothing extra thrown in there. Oshawa General holding a 6-0 lead here in the second period with 13.08 to go. Faceoff coming deep in the Oshawa general zone. Dolson in net for the generals tonight. And as I mentioned at the start of the second period, we've had a change in the uh, Ice Dogs. Nick Foley uh, started the first period. However, Josh Evans has taken over here in the second. General's just able to clear the blue line. Coglin back to pick it up for the Ice Dogs. Over on the far side to Keurig. Gets it up to Taylor. Taylor brings it in, unable to keep it in at the blue line, so we've got another offside. An exciting game for the fans here tonight in attendance at the Civic Auditorium to see six goals. Anytime the, a lot of goals for the home side, the fans enjoy stuff like that, and they've seen a couple of uh, bouts of fisticuffs as well, so an exciting game for the fans uh, so far here tonight. Maybe not so much for the Ice Dog fans that may have made the trip up the no. 401 in rush hour traffic to see this. But uh, I th I, I'm sure the Mississauga Ice Dogs fans fully understand the uh, idea of expansion and their team being a first-year club. Their inaugural season probably wouldn't expect them to do too much in the win column anyways. Corville gets around his man but unable to get it away. And he's hooked to the ice. That'll bring about a penalty to the Ice Dogs. As Corville was taken down with a hook as he attempted to get in for a good uh, scoring opportunity. So that coming with 12.31 to go here in the second period. Just touching on the uh, thought of expansion a moment ago. A lot of people uh, knocking the Ontario Hockey League for expanding too much, maybe watering it down a little bit as far as talent is concerned. But Mississauga and Brampton, of course, added to the league this year as we take another look at Ian Corville coming in here down the right wing. And as he tries to break around the defenseman, he's hauled down and there's a hooking call on the play. That was Andrew Davis, number 25, who hooked him to the ice. Just to continue your story. I was just talking about expansion, the Brampton Battalion and the Ice Dogs coming in this year, and it's obviously going to take a little bit of time, maybe a couple of few years, to uh, put a strong team on the ice, any team that's going to contend or go anywhere in the playoffs. It would certainly take a little while, and I'm sure the uh, Ice Dogs and Battalion fans both understand that. Demidoff doing a good job on the far point to keep that puck in on the power play. Evans there to kick it back out. Generals try to get it across. It was picked back up. Evans is down. Just goes wide of the far post. Theobald there to pick it up and bring it back out for the Ice Dogs. Out there with Cowan. Up in the forward killing penalty unit for the Ice Dogs. Oren Armstrong back on the points. Colley now along the near boards. Out there with Bucktooth and Govro. Colley tries to come right out in front and loses control of the puck. 
Colley's not a big man physically, but he can certainly do a lot with heart. That puck's going to be cleared high over to glass, and somebody better duck below us. Calder's now out after having served his 10-minute uh, misconduct. Actually turned into a little bit more than 10 yeah, minutes as Brandon so. Coulter waited for a whistle for uh, more than a few minutes there. He was uh, free to be sprung from the pen, but of course after a 10-minute misconduct, which is a personal penalty and not a team penalty, you have to wait for the next whistle. And uh, Brandon Coulter was sort of stuck there for a little while, but he's out now. and uh, well, He ought to be fresh and ready to go. Certainly will, not unlike Richard Scott, who uh, remains out of the game with a 17 minutes, 17 minutes worth of penalties, and uh, he'll be back in the third period. We're off in there against Page. Jens win the faceoff. Spence has it back along the near boards. Over to McMillan. Back to Spence. Spence getting some time on the power play unit. The shot goes in right on net. Passmore in the crease, but the referee lost sight of the puck, and we've got some shoving after the play in there. Brad Ralph pushing and shoving with Kirik. I'm not sure he wants any of that. Is uh, Kirik in there? Is uh, he's a big, big guy. boy? He certainly <laughs> is. Look at some of the fans in attendance here on a Tuesday night. Not a bad crowd, as we mentioned, Joel, for a Tuesday night and the weather, uh, everything all considered. I'd have to agree with you on that one. It seems like, as we talked about at the beginning of the game, every every game here we're talking about a snowstorm outside, which <laughs> Lately. is a little bit rare for these parts. And talking about cottage country and North Bay and places like that have less snow than us right now, so it's a little bit different for southern Ontario this time of year. Jens, keep control of that faceoff deep in the ice dog zone. There's still 55 seconds to go on that penalty. Upton carries in, scores! Upton from the far circle makes it 7 0 in favor of the Oshawa Generals. Well, on that one, Joel looked like the uh, defense just kept backing in on Evans, and uh, Upton was willing to let him before he let the shot go. Well, those ones are tough, and the idea is to box him up and keep the offense to the outside, but Upton was able to get a little bit in there to get some congratulations from Ty Garner and the trainers and coaches on the Generals bench. But, uh, you know, you got to keep him to the outside, and the Ice Dogs weren't able to do so on that play. There's a look at Dion Francis, one of the reporters on Plugged In at Durham Television. You see the play here as Upton comes in and just at the top of the circle, actually right from the faceoff dot, he lets it go. Power play goal, I believe that's the second power play goal of the night for the Generals. And Ralph was in on that one again. Ralph's got himself a few points here tonight. Generals break back out on the far side. Calder now is back on the ace after having served that lengthy penalty. Bucktooth over there to do some forechecking. Picked up by Cowan on the far side as he gets it up to Taylor. Baxter there to take the puck away from him. Armstrong now on the far side to Orr. Orr goes in with a shot wide of the net. Coulter over on the far side picks it up as he comes up through the middle of the ice. Coulter up over the red line and over the blue line. Winds up for a slap shot right on Evans. And he steers that into the corner. Coulter gets it back out front and Buck is unable to get the shot away as Cowan had him well tied up. Taylor now with that puck behind his own net. Up on the far side to Jones. Cowan now at center for the Ice Dogs. He's unable to get anywhere as he's checked by Rusenstrom. Armstrong goes down on the far side. Nor has it. His pass doesn't connect. Generals clear that puck deep back inside the ice dog zone as Peters goes in to pick it up. I'm sure Peters will be looking for the hat trick here tonight. Kazoris, nice move to get around. Gets that shot away and a nice glove save there by Evans. Ian Corville in there with that puck now. Couldn't come out in front. Armstrong's going to tie it up alongside of the net and try and get a whistle here as Evans falls on it to make sure. Well, Evans just playing it safe there in the Mississauga Ice Dogs goal. And uh, as was Nick Foley trying to do in the first period, seeing a lot of shots the two goalies have. 31 shots here halfway through, so I guess we're looking at a 62-shot pace, if my math is correct. I know that's a tough one. But, uh, you know, the goaltenders both having to uh, freeze the puck and slow things down for the team. And uh, with a veteran goaltender like Evans, that's something that he knows that he has to do. He's seen the bulk of the uh, bulk of the work here for the Mississauga Ice Dogs so far, playing in 25 games and uh, goals against the average of 594. But uh, as probably not indicative uh, to his play with the amount of shots that he gets. Still curious as to why he was listed to start and then uh, fully started, but uh, doesn't make any difference at this point. Peters in there to pick it up for the Generals. Gets it out through center, but unable to pick it up there was Kazoris is cleared back down by the Ice Dogs. Clearing it on the far side by Wiseman. Wiseman tries to get around Spence, and Spence does a good job of forcing him off in the corner. In there to pick it up is Hart, Sebastian Hart, as he tries to get around Kazoris on the far side. Jen's doing a good job of covering up deep in their own zone. Cleared back down the ice, no icing there. 
Evans leaves for Coughlin, who just misses a hit there from Peters. Dickinson in over the blue lines. He tries to get the shot away. Rosenstrom goes down on him. Prevents him from getting the shot away. And I believe we got a delayed call here against the Oshawa Generals. This one's going to be interference. And I believe this one is coming to Demidoff in front of the net. Number 20, Ilya Demidoff. Demidoff's going to go off for and start. It's going to be McMillan, McMillan actually, his yep. defensive partner, going off for obstruction interference. Generals on the upside of a 7 to nothing score here. 9.02 to go in the second period. Probably put it into cruise control anytime soon if they wanted to, but uh, you never do want to let up. It's not a game like, as we take a look at the penalty here, and we'll see Jeff McMillan tying up the Ice Dogs player in front. It's not like a game like baseball where you can let up and maybe not steal the base or, uh, or things like that. You've got to keep putting the pressure on in hockey or you get into bad habits. Taylor clears that puck over in the far side. Harris gets a shot away. Page was taken down in front, and I think we've got another penalty, and this one's going to be a roughing call against the Generals. I think this was Ilya Demidoff this time. Well, if I didn't get him last time, I got him this time, Joel. Well, Scott Page was a little bit unhappy with Ilya Demidoff, who threw his helmet into the corner with, uh, with his stick. Of course, in this league, if you touch the puck without your helmet on, your team's given an equipment infraction. So Scott Page bends down to uh, pick up his helmet and put it on, and Ilya Demidov has sent it into the corner. Of course, Demidov could argue that he just wanted to get it out of the goal crease area. Yeah, right. He could argue, but I don't think he'd win. Well, that's not the call at any rate. The penalty is for roughing, and uh, the two defensemen that were on the ice, McMillan and Demidov, both go off now, and they'll leave things in the hands of Jim Baxter with uh, Kevin Cauley and Richard Spence. Well, the Ice Dogs with a real opportunity here to break this goose egg now with a two-man advantage for the next minute, 42. Taylor winds up, and that shot's blocked in front by Baxter and goes into the corner. Page in there to pick it up. Page circling around the far side. The Jens playing this triangle. It comes across in front. Taylor gets it back out in front. Dolson there to knock it off into the corner. Kevin Colley in the far side takes a high stick on the far side from Fraser Clare. So much for that two-man advantage. Well, the stick came up and caught Kevin Colley just under the uh, visor, and he did a good job playing it up for the referee who uh, was on the other side of the ice but watching the play rather closely. And any time a player goes down like that, it's going to get the referee's atten uh, attention, and players have been known to do that. As you'll see here, the stick comes up, and Kevin Colley is going to go down like he's been shot. And uh, Pat Smola sees it, of course, and calls the two-minute infraction for high sticking. So that'll nullify the two-man advantage at any rate. Times like this in a 7-0 score, it's a good opportunity for teams to work on their special special teams, power play and penalty killing, and the Generals uh, got a chance to work on their 5-on-3 uh, disadvantage there. I think sometimes the better the actor you are, the more likely you are to draw a penalty. <laughs> it's probably true. The referees, uh, having said that, the referees catch on to players that do that. And uh, if, you, if, you're known as a, yeah, if you're known as a diver, they're not going to call them for you and probably not going to call a couple that actually do happen. So the stick did come up and catch Colley. Just his reaction afterwards was a la Patrick Waugh making it look good for the cameras. Blake Orr now with that puck at the top of the circle. Let's a shot go and Dawson gets the glove out to make an easy save. Eight Prob minutes exactly, Joel, sorry. Probably not an opportune time for Orr to shoot the puck. There was nobody in front, and Derek Dolson was able to see it cleanly. Still a four-on-three advantage, so a lot of ice out there as Calverde gets set to uh, come out of the penalty box. You see Orr here as he takes control of that puck just inside the uh, blue line. Then he'll pull out towards the center of the ice to get a good shot, but then, uh, as you mentioned, there's absolutely nobody in front from the ice dogs to uh, block that shot or at least try and uh, deflect it in. Well, that was kind of like saying here, let's have a face-off because you're not going to beat a goaltender on a shot like that unless he's having one of those nights, and uh, Derek Dolson has been fine in goal tonight, and he saw that shot all the way. Or with that puck again. Over to Wiseman, gets it back to Orr. Orr on the far side, being watched by Passmore. Armstrong's on the far side over here on the point. Or into Wiseman. Gets it across ice and Dolson down. They score. Number 17, I believe that was in there. I think that's Lou Dickinson that scored that. That was a nice passing play. Sure was. And uh, Dickinson was on this side and he was calling for the pass and wanting somebody to thread that needle. And eventually uh, they did just do just that. Dolson came over and made a attempt at stretching at the pads and making the save, but Dickinson was quick and good hands on the side of the net for Dickinson to put the puck in. That was a power play goal, too, as the Gens were still two men down. Or one, one down, I guess, on that. 
It was still a four on three disadvantage That's at right. that point. And Trevor Gillies was just a little late getting to Dickinson as they uh, had the triangle formed, but unable to cover that man was Trevor Gillies. And the Ice Dogs get on the board here. Buck two takes his man in. It could be an icing call here if the Gens get to it first, and they do. Baxter gets back to touch it up. So that'll give the Ice Dogs a little bit to uh, look forward to now having scored their first goal and not to, to be shut out here tonight. Good look at uh, Joe Tilly in the crowd. Joe Tilly must have gotten the night off at CFTO. Usually does the nightly sports at 11.30. Well, he knew that you were here, Joel, and, and obviously you're his idol, so that's why he's here in the crowd. You probably got him free tickets. That's probably why he's <laughs> must here. Must be. Face off deep back in the ice dog zone with 7.32 go here in the second period. 7-1 in favor of the Oshawa Generals. Coulter in there loses the face off. Both teams playing a man short. Nashua will be on a very short lived power play here in the next uh, 28 seconds. Curick with that puck deep in his own zone now goes in behind his own net. Clears it off on the far side for Coglin. T ball not able to get any places. Colter tries to pick it up. Colter being watched by Taylor in there. Colter unable to get out in front of the net. Taylor picks it up again. Coulter takes him into the corner. Curie comes in now to hold Coulter out of the play. Kazoritz in there gets it out front and a shot on net there by Coulter, but a nice save in there by Evans as it's cleared back down. And in 25 seconds, Oshawa's on a power play here. Baxter now with that puck in the center ice area, carries it in over the blue line. Baxter lays it off for Upton, who comes in to pick it up along the top of the circle. Upton trying to get it out in front for Colley. Upton still doing a good job with the blue line to keep it in. Rusenstrom in there as well. Baxter has it now. Mississauga back at full strength as that shot steered into the corner by Evans. Colley gets it back to the point now to Rusenstrom. He clears it back in. Puck lies in behind the net. Upton gets it out in front for McMillan over to Colley, and he just lets that shot go wide of the net. Upton with control of that puck on the far side. Drops it off to Govro. Govro into Upton. Back to Colley. Back in front to Upton, and he fails to pick up that pass. Rudenstrom along the point tries to keep it in, but Clary gets it out for the Ice Dogs. McMillan there to pick it up as Govro takes his man out of the play. Govro in, drops it off for Colley on the far side. Looks like Colley may have had the wind knocked out of him on the far side as he goes to the ice. It was an innocent looking hip check, but I believe it just uh, maybe knocked the wind out of Kevin Colley there for just a, a moment. And there's not more helpless feeling when you go to take that grasp of oxygen. There's nothing there. Yeah, it's certainly true, and uh, we'll have to wait and see what's wrong with Kevin Colley as Brian Boyce comes over to him. Of course, Brian Boyce fresh off a silver medal championship at the World Juniors, the equipment manager for Team Canada, and now back with the Generals. I want to make a point, Bob, about that last shift and uh, good play by the captain of the Mississauga Ice Dogs, Scott Page, on the penalty kill. Of course, Mississauga was down five men to four for, uh, for about 30 seconds or so. During that time, Mike Ancuda broke his stick and dropped it, and uh, the captain, Scott Page, came back and gave the defenseman the stick. And that was definitely a good play. We'll take another look at the hit here on Kevin Cauley. It looked like he may have just had the wind knocked out of him. Well, hopefully we'll catch it here. No, just innocent-looking hit. And it looked like he went down. It looks like it may have been the wind. I don't know. It's hard to say from this point. But I caught him on the hip, so let's hope that's not a hip injury. But just to get back to what I was saying, uh, Scott Page gives the defenseman the stick, and it turns it into a little bit better of a situation. Having said that, when they did come to full strength, it still seemed like the Generals had the power play because one of their forwards was playing without a stick. But I know Mr. Cherry's in attendance tonight, and he's, as far as I'm concerned, the authority on stuff like that. And he'd definitely <laughs> be happy with his captain, Scott Page, for doing that. Kevin Colley now up and going slowly off the ice. I believe it's nothing more than maybe the wind knocked out. We'll hopefully get a report as he goes down the alleyway. Maybe a bit of a, a hit problem, but it certainly wasn't a hard check. Maybe just the way he was hit. Demidoff clears it back in. Peters unable to get to it. Demidoff again on the far side as he's watched by Cowan. Picked up by Gazoris and cleared back in, and Orr has it now. Or up for Zubik on this side as Kazoris goes after him. Spence at center, clears it up for Peters, and he's unable to pick it up. Or now back inside his own zone. Over for Armstrong. Up for Cowan through the middle, and he's well 
checked, but then picked up by Zubik, number two. Demidoff clears it back out over the blue line. Kazoris over there trying to kick the puck along the boards, and Corville taking a few shots in the head. Demidoff with that puck inside his own blue line, gets it up to Spence along the near boards. Spence up over center. Tries to clear the puck in, but doesn't get it deep, and Orr picks it up now for the Ice Dogs. Orr with a pass up to Cowan. Picked up by Peters. Play a little sloppy right here in the center ice area now, and there's a useless penalty taken by Fowler as he trips up Peters in the center ice area away from everybody. Of course, speaking of acting, Andrew Peters clearly taken down, but uh, added the nice little triple roll there to make it look good. Number seven going off, that's uh, Spencer Fowler. He's played in 31 games so far for the Ace Dogs this year, has no goals and one assist, so certainly not known for his offensive abilities. Probably one of the concerns with the Mississauga Ice Dogs coaching staff would be uh, penalties like that and the lack of discipline maybe with their, their team. Not unlike the Toronto St. Michael's Majors who uh, give up a lot of penalties. Uh, you know, the Mississauga Ice Dogs would like to stay out of the box a little bit and uh, give their goaltender a chance at not seeing so much rubber, and that's <laughs> something they'll work on. So Fowler in the penalty box, the Jens back on the power play pass. We're now with that puck just inside the blue line as he tries to get set up, drops it back for Ralph. Ralph tried to get it back to Gillies, but there to intercept and bring it out. It was Dickinson, he gets a shot in on net. Dolson leaves it then for Ralph. Ralph up through the middle of the ice. Up to Passmore on the far side. Jonah LaRue out there as well. Gillies and Baxter on the points. Back to Baxter, he gets a shot away. That skips wide of the net. Passmore over along the far board is able to pick it up. Passmore gets a shot pass from Gillies. He doesn't get the shot away cleanly. The Ice Dogs will pick it up and clear it back out. Dolson out of his net to clear it up. For Baxter, Coulter trying to break towards the net. Baxter holds up, trying to get somebody in position. Cross ice pass. For Rusenstrom and his shot blocked on the far side. Drew Bucktooth now with that puck at center ice. Cleared back in by Baxter. There to hold it up is Evans. And Kuda in there now to pick it up for the Ice Dogs. Clears it in the, colder, in the corner, but there's Colder to intercept. Oshawa working the puck around the perimeter, but they haven't got any good shots away, and nobody in front of the net as Rusenstrom gets a shot away. That's deflected into the corner. Generals with an interesting line combination out here for the power play. Drew Bucktooth, Brandon Coulter, and Brent Govero. Rusenstrom gets a high shot away. That's knocked down in front. Oshawa tries to clear it out front. Try to jam it in, but down is Josh Evans to keep it out. And another mix-up in front of the net. You hate to see this after the whistle. Well, it's kind of useless, and it slows the game down, so that's something that you don't like to see. Exciting for the fans when the pushing and shoving starts up, but, uh, you know, it's definitely something that's tedious, and it's done over and over again, and it's something that uh, slows the game down in my mind. Penalty coming up here to uh, somebody. The referee came over to the box and indicated a... At least it looked like he was over here to indicate a roughing penalty. He's just indicated again to somebody, and now the linesmen are bringing Brandon Coulter over to the penalty box. You take a look at him there on your screen. So uh, in behind the play, Brandon Coulter's been given a roughing penalty. Well, Coulter certainly spent more than his fair share of time in the penalty box tonight. I started to touch on during the power play by the Generals. They had Drew Bucktooth out there with Brent Govero and Brandon Coulter as we take a look at a replay here. See if we can catch why Brandon Coulter went off. Obviously something to do with the pushing and shoving in front of the net. Well, you saw Coulter bring his arms up there and the linesman jump in, so there must have been something on that play that uh, Pat Smola decided was worthy of two minutes in the penalty box. So the Ace Dogs now go on a power play for the next minute 47 seconds. Taylor, a cross-ice pass for Armstrong, tries to clear deep into the Oshawa zone, but intercepted by Rusin's and cleared back out. 2.24 to go here in the second period. Or with that puck behind his own net as he tries to get set up on this power play unit. Up on the near boards to Jones. Jones carries deep into the Oshawa and gets it back to Orr at the point. Back into Jones and he's watched in there by Spence. T-Bolt has that puck in there and he's watched by Ilya Demidoff. Oshawa doing a good job on this penalty kill as it's picked up and cleared by Spence. 
Stopped by Orr in the center ice there as he goes back inside his own blue line now to regroup. Orr on the far side for Jones, and he was un unable to get anywhere as Upton was there, because Orris now carries back in for Oshawa. Jones now comes up on this near boards. And over the Oshawa blue line, nobody in there to help him out. Jones brings it in, gets the puck away, and puck's lying loose in the crease, and able to get it in is Mississauga, and a shot there goes wide of the net. Nobody really knew where the puck was, least of all Derek Dolson, and lie there in the goal crease in front of his pad, and the Generals get away with one there. Lucky that the Ice Dogs weren't able to put one in. Pass more for Colley. He's not able to get any worse. Claire now brings it back in for the ice dog. Gets a shot away on the near side. And easy save in there for Dolson. Page tries to get it back to the point, but there an intercept was the Oshawa Generals. And Kevin Colley's going to, on a half-hearted breakaway as he goes in, tries to get it back. Brian Passmore tied up well by Ancuda as he tried to get a shot away on the pass from Colley. Fans screaming for a penalty, but no penalty forthcoming. Now we've got another fight in front of the net. This is Ancuda, I believe, and I didn't catch the number of the... Uh, is that Gillies it's, in it's there? It's Trevor Gillies, and it was because Ancuda took down Brian Passmore behind the net, and as you said, there was no call on the play, but Trevor Gillies skated in like a knight in shining armor, I guess, and I'll give you my 30-second guarantee on an instigator penalty <laughs> for this one because Trevor Gillies came in there and just dropped the gloves and started wailing away. Ancuda had no chance at, uh, at getting his gloves off, and getting into things, but Trevor Gillies coming to the aid of one of his teammates, and uh, Ancuda taking a little bit by surprise, I would say. You see Pat Smola giving the extra two-minute indication here, so Trevor Gillies is definitely going to get the instigator on that one. I had to look twice to see what Gillies was doing that deep in the other team's end, because that's a really uh, strange waters for him. Well, as I said, he came streaking in from the, uh, the blue line area when he saw Ancuda take Passmore down in behind the goal, so Mike Ancuda definitely taken by surprise on that one, as you're going to see... Uh, Trevor Gillies comes streaking in here. Great shot from the end cam there in behind the Mississauga goal. And not much Ancuda can do when he looks up and all of a sudden a guy like Gillies is on top of him. That all coming with 44.96 seconds left here in the second period. And the Oshawa Generals in front of the Mississauga Ice Dogs, 7-1. to one. Pat Smola handing it 10-minute misconducts like candy here. He's already given one to Richard Scott and Brandon Coulter, and now Trevor Gillies, as you hear the fans boo. But uh, that's what he does. Where I guess that's Pat Smola's style. When you're giving out the instigator, you're also going to give it a 10-minute misconduct with it. That's what he's done twice here tonight. And uh, one would argue that maybe the instigator was enough. Having said that, Trevor Gillies will be gone for 17 minutes, so if we do see him again, it won't be until near the end of the hockey game, that's late right. in the third period, assuming Mississauga doesn't get six quick ones here and send it into overtime. <laughs> Face-off coming outside the Ace Dogs blue line. So the Generals will play a man short here for the next two minutes. And unless the Ace Dogs score before the end of the second period, this penalty will carry over into the third period. Darrell Upton coming over now to serve the penalty for Trevor Gillies, the two-minute instigator portion of the 17-minute penalty. Ice Dogs win that face off and is cleared back inside their own zone. Back to pick it up is Dickinson behind his own net. Try and get one last rush up the ice before the expiration of play here in the second period. T ball carries that puck deep into the Oshawa zone and he goes down like he was shot. Rusenstrom on the far side doesn't get it out along the boards, but he gets a second opportunity, makes no mistake this time and gets it all the way down the ice. Dickinson back to pick it up as Corville gives chase on him around behind the net. Dickinson, maybe time for one last shot as he goes in on the far side. Drops it off to Page. Page will try and get it out in front, and Dolson there to clear it away from the front of the net. Dickinson keeps it in at the blue line. Baxter there to pick it up, and there's the buzzer to end the second period of play, and the Oshawa Generals definitely full value for that 7-1 lead, Joel. Yeah, leading 4-0 after the first period. They had a few more in the second, and the Ice Dogs were able to snap the shutout, of course, and a positive note for them. The Oshawa Generals, uh, Bob, are one of the probably one of the toughest teams around the OHL. It doesn't show that often because they do have good discipline. And here in the second period, they're uh, showing a little bit of their toughness, standing up to another tough team in the Mississauga Ice Dogs. But uh, definitely, probably, I definitely, probably, I was going to say, negate myself. Is that like a definite maybe? <laughs> something like that. 
the general is probably showing a lack of discipline is what I'm trying to say and uh, I don't think it's necessary for them to jump into those fighting situations but leading seven to one I guess they figure they're gonna do what they want to do you're absolutely right well the score here as we mentioned at the end of the second period Oshawa seven the ice dogs one fight you to stay tuned for Donald beating his interview with Ty Garner just a reminder you're watching OHL primetime on Durham television and in Mississauga on Rogers Community TV Oshawa Generals are happy to welcome back Tyrone Garner into the lineup. And uh, Tyrone, when Tyler Moss went down an injury in December, did you think he'd be up with Calgary as long as you were? Oh no, not at all. You know, it's it's un unfortunate situation they have there. Uh, all the goalies getting hurt, and uh, at the point where Kenny was about to come back, uh, he actually hurt his back again. His back spasm about him signing autograph. So then I was up there even longer, and then uh, Jaguar. He pulled his hamstring, so that uh, enabled me to be up there longer, which uh, I didn't have no problem with. You know, I enjoyed my stay up there, and I learned a lot. Who do you think you learned the most from? Um, just probably just being there itself, you know, and not, not from anyone. Like, you, you learn a lot from watching the other goalies, and I learned, like, all the goalies that we played against, and you just learn a lot from being up there and with the guys. Halfway through your stay, uh, they went out and acquired uh, Andre Trefiloff, but almost to your advantage, he was hurt in one of the games very early in against, I believe it was uh, Boston, uh, Boston, and you came in and played most of that game and got the start against Pittsburgh. When you came up, did you think you'd actually see any action with the club? No, not at all. You know, I was just going up expecting to back up for a little while, maybe a week or two, and, uh, and it was a very it's a fortunate opportunity opportunity for me you know it's not often you hear a junior goalie gets a start right out from junior into the NHL and I just enjoyed it and it was a great learning experience for me. It caused quite a stir in the area when you were getting some playing action your first taste of NHL action was against the Buffalo Sabres a third period start after uh, the team had fallen behind what was going through your mind when coach Brian Sutter told you to get ready because you're going in? Actually, uh, he told me to go in in the second, and when he brought Trefloff over, then he talked to Trefloff and decided not, and I think about three minutes left before we went on the ice, he told me I was going in, so I was a little nervous in that game. You know, it's, it, you can practice all you want up there, but until you get in the game, you don't realize how much faster the game is. Is there any indication whether or not you'll be back against uh, in the starting the lineup against uh, the Peterborough Peets on Thursday night? Uh, yes, I am. I've, I talked to John Goodwin already, and he said, you know, just take it easy today, rest, and uh, we'll have a good practice tomorrow, and, and I'll be starting uh, Thursday in Peterborough. How would you compare the differences in practices in the NHL and the Ontario Hockey League? Uh, just uh, in the NHL, it's a lot like everything's just a, a higher pace up there, and you know, and, and every pass is right on the tape, and everything's so accurate. It just the whole game is picked up to uh, like three notches. I've always wanted to find this out. Uh, as a little kid grew up, I played goalie, and obviously I never amounted anything, or I wouldn't be standing here holding the microphone in my hand. But when you're in a game like this, you're leading seven to one. On the opposite side of the coin, if you're getting beat by a score like this, is it harder to lose a game where you get blown out? Is it harder to lose one late in the third period? Uh, definitely, you know, it's it, it's tough to come back like that, you know, and when you're down 7-1, you know, the other team's got the momentum, especially when it's in their home barn, and uh, it, it's tough to come back like that, and it, it, it just it will show a lot of character of the other team who's down if they can hold up and come back in the third. Tyrone, thanks very much for stopping by, and good luck on Thursday night in Peterborough. That's Tyrone Garner of the Oshawa Generals. One Oshawa native who's seen a lot of action tonight is Chris Taylor of the Mississauga Ice Dogs. I had a chance to talk to him in Mississauga Friday night. The Mississauga Ice Dogs are a very young team. Only 10 players in the lineup were in the Ontario Hockey League last year. The balance of the squad spent last season in varying levels of hockey, including Oshawa native Chris Taylor. The Dogs freshman center is among the smallest in the league at 5 foot 9, 160 pounds. His speed makes up for his lack of size. Well, uh, that's definitely an advantage, but uh, there's a lot of big guys out there in Nashville, like a small guy needs to play, uh, play a big game, but uh, I try my best out there and try to go as fast as I can, but that's about it. Obviously, his, uh, you don't measure him by his stature on the ice. I mean, he's a little guy, but he comes to play big every night. I think that's the biggest attribute that he has. He might only be 5'9 uh, or whatever, but he plays like a 6'3 kid. And what we're trying to do is incorporate uh, certain aspects of his game so that he can utilize the speed to the best of his ability. Taylor is an aggressive player and looks to the NHL for inspiration on the ice. 
Oh, that's another thing, a small guy can't be afraid of anyone out there, and uh, that's what, uh, that's what uh, like a Theo Fleury and a, and a Doug Gilmore, that's what they try to do. Uh, I mean, sure, they don't uh, drop the gloves too much, but uh, uh, Doug Gilmore, Theo Fleury, they're great players for their size, and uh, that's what like, I want to become like, one of, like kind of one of them. Well, I think his, his self-discipline on the ice is extremely, extremely valuable to our team, and uh, I think it's a credit to whoever uh, coached Chris in previous years. And, uh, being from Eastern Ontario, I know what the Oshawa system is all about. They have quality coaches throughout, and it's very evident in his play. He's very disciplined. He plays his position very well, and he knows when to explode, when not to, in terms of using his speed. But the biggest thing is he, he has the ability to play a bit of a Phil Furry type role where he can get underneath some people's skin. It's been a long inaugural season for the Ice Dogs with just one win. Chris Taylor has learned a lot from his rookie season. I mean, uh, we have like there are 16 rookies, and uh, I mean the ice time's good compared to, like your first year being a first year player. Ice time's really well, and uh, I mean I'm getting lots of experience out there, and um, it's uh, it's going well. Coach Tim Holton only needs to look to the visitors' bench to see what kind of player he expects Chris Taylor to develop into. Well, what we're hoping that he develops into is a perfect example right there tonight is Kevin Colley. I think Colley is a great little player who's always in perpetual motion, same thing, moving his feet, and because of it creates a lot of offense. So I think the best example for us, and hopefully down the road, if he can be half the player Kevin Colley is, that's quite a player. At only 18 years of age, Taylor knows what he wants out of life. Ask him what he'd like to do if hockey doesn't quite pan out, and then he'll tell you that's just not an issue. I haven't really thought about that too much, really. It's all hockey all the way. Oh, yeah, 100%. Quite often, fans will take a look at the standings, see where the Mississauga Ice Dogs is, take a look at how many penalty minutes they've taken. They'll think the team is made up of a bunch of goons, and quite frankly, they'll think of the team as a sort of a bunch of losers. But they're a real class organization from Don Cherry right down to the bottom of the ladder. Now, Posted outside of the Mississauga Ice Dogs dressing room is a letter from a, from a young girl to Scott Page, the captain of the, uh, the uh, Mississauga Ice Dogs we met in the first period. That's a real breath of fresh air and I'd like to share a little bit of that with you. It says here, my youngest daughter Katie thinks the world of Scott Page and has waited patiently for the opportunity to get his autograph. Last night she had that opportunity. While waiting for the players to come out last night, Matt Coughlin was nice enough to stop and autograph a puck for us. After signing the puck, I asked Matt if Scott would still be in the dressing room. When he answered yes, my daughter Katie's eyes lit up and told her we'd stay, wait around a little bit longer to see if he'd actually come out. When uh, Matt heard this, he went in to get Scott to say there was a little girl waiting for his autograph. When Scott approached Katie, she asked him if he'd sign a puck for her. Not only did he sign it, but he personally auto autographed it forward, personalizing it. She then presented him with a picture she had drawn. It was him and Scott skating. Scott graciously accepted the picture and even went so far as to tell Katie that he put it up in his bedroom. It was a real breath of fresh air to see the athletes who were all so often caught up in their own world to treat my daughter like this. And that's signed from Jim and Vardonian family of Mississauga. So I just wanted to let everyone know out there how great the Mississauga Ice Dogs treat, their, treat the, everyone in the, their fans like their family. And they treat all the fans like they're great people too. And it's a real class act to see the Mississauga Ice Dogs acting this way. I just wanted to give a little plug to the organization because they're a real class act. You're watching OHL Primetime on Durham Television and on Rogers Community TV in Mississauga. second period overview let's go upstairs now to Bob Benham and Joel Glantz. Thanks Donal that was uh, a little better second period for the uh, for the uh, Mississauga Ice Dogs Joel they didn't give up nearly as many goals in the second period as they did in the uh, first period but they did get on the score sheet but uh, well they Richard, gave up nearly as many almost <laughs> but Richard Scott yeah. uh, who we talked about uh, who scored early in that second period having soft hands and he certainly demonstrated that on this goal coming up here well, he sure did. Richard Scott's a guy that, as I said, he's an overage rookie on the team, and uh, he's been given kudos for his ability to play tough and to forecheck hard, but on this play, he shows some soft hands in front, and he's able to put the puck high over the goaltender, something that we haven't seen a whole lot from Richard Scott, but we've seen a little more lately, definitely developing some soft hands. Before we look at the next goal, Bob, I want to touch on the letter that Dono read just before we went to break from the parent of the little girl, the Mississauga Ice Dogs. And, uh, you know, I hear all the time on the... On, uh, 
you know, the internet, you see things from fans and things like that about how the players aren't friendly with the fans and the young people. You've got to remember that these are 16-, 17-year-old, 18-year-old guys. And they're concentrating hard on being drafted to the NHL, and they're not always completely focused when it comes to their followings. And I think they do try hard to be good to their fans, and I think they like to uh, be nice to the kids that wait outside the dressing room. And oftentimes they get caught off guard and get made to look bad. But I think that overall the Ontario Hockey League is a good bunch of guys. You're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, they, they do. I mean, they're, uh, they, have, they have to come concentrate on the game at hand that's what they're out here for and uh, sometimes you might lose sight of the uh, the uh, little things I guess if you want to call them little things or big things in a lot of young kids eyes but yeah. uh, we get a look here at the second goal of the period for the generals this one put them into a uh, six nothing lead at this point and that was a shot that was blown by uh, on the far side blown by Josh Evans yeah as we talked about uh, both goaltenders having a little bit of trouble so far tonight against the Generals, and it's tough when you see a lot of rubber, and uh, going into games, you know you're going to see a lot of shots. So far here tonight, the General have put 34 up on the board, and that's a lot of, uh, you know, they're on pace for over 50 shots in this hockey game, and that's a lot of rubber for a goaltender to see. And night in and night out, your confidence is shattered as a goaltender. It's, it's, you can say so much that, you know, I understand playing on an expansion team, but at the same time, having said that, it gets tougher and tougher every night as we take a look at the Mississauga Ice Dogs, who did get on the board at that point. That was uh, number Dick 17 on the doorstep. You're right. Just a reminder, you're watching OHL Primetime on Durham Television and on Mississauga on Rogers Community TV. Welcome back, everybody. We're just getting ready for the start of the third period here at the Oshawa Civic Auditorium tonight. Bob Benham, Joel Glant, and Donald Beatty, and the rest of our Durham Television crew. We hope you fans in Mississauga are enjoying this game on Rogers Community TV down there. I'm sure you're not enjoying the scores. The hometown Oshawa Generals are in front of the Ice Dogs from Mississauga, 7-1, to as we get ready to start play here in the third period, Joel. Yeah, Bob, and I just wanted to point out that I've got my 50-50 tickets here anxiously awaiting the drawing of the winning number, and I'll just let you know now that if I don't win, I'm splitting them with you. No, no. 50-50 means you have to split with me if you I, win. If I don't win, I'm going to split with you. Okay. You want to buy some unused tickets? Sure. To start this period, Trevor Gilly still has a minute 15 left to go on his penalty, which was uh, incurred just before the end of the second period for his instigation in the fight, and he uh, may or may not be back for the third period depending on what happens and uh, because he's also got a game misconduct in five minutes so he's certainly going to get lots of rest and we see somebody out on the ice with a hammer and I promise not to say anything bad about him he's got a, a deadly weapon in his hand well I don't know what's going on here something that probably should have been taken care of in the intermission but when the referees came out they must have noticed a little bit of a problem down near the Oshawa General's net and something to do with the peg in the ice He's got his hammer and his trusty chisel in hand, so I'd just like to uh, make a comment about Donald Beatty. Uh, the other night he was complaining about the fact that he had to run up and down st the stairs so often between uh, periods to do interviews as well as color because of my absence. Well, it certainly didn't do much for his waistline, uh, Donald, but I'm sure if you have a few more opportunities, you'll be able to shed to that 40 pounds you picked up over Christmas and New Year's. Donald's going to be grabbing the hammer and chisel out of that guy's hands in a minute. <laughs> Wow, just Don kidding, Donald. Just Donald Beatty, I just want you to know that I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> well, <coughs> excuse me, it was you that told me to put on the 40 pounds. <laughs> I didn't notice that. There's a couple oh, of good-looking good, guys. Good-looking guys in the booth. I wonder who that would be. So I'll okay. be fine just as soon as I stop coughing to death up here. Look at Kevin Colley getting set here, going through some of his pre-period rituals as he circles the net and... Uh, as we saw him in the second period leave the ice early. He's back now, so he will play here in the third period, obviously. And he starts this one alongside Drew Bucktooth with Jeff McMillan and Richard Spence on the blue line. McMillan gets that puck and quickly clears it down the ice. Kills some time off this penalty. Mississauga trying to get set up in their own zone for a breakout play. Theobald comes up and he takes a check from Kevin Colley on the far side. McMillan picks it up inside his own blue line and clears it back up. Colley there to intercept. Ice Dogs with that puck down inside their own zone. Zubik, the Wiseman, clears it over on the far side. 
Back to Wiseman again. Wiseman, a bad pass there as it's picked up by Colley. Colley comes in over the blue line as he goes around, goes around Wiseman. Colley doing some good work on this penalty kill in there for the Generals. 34 seconds left in that penalty. Colley over there against Page, but Page able to pick it up off the boards. Lays it off for Dickinson, who comes up over center. In over the blue line. Drops it off for T-Ball. T-Ball unable to get anywhere. Drops it back to Wiseman. Gets it over to Page on the far side as he winds up for a shot. That goes wider than that. T-Ball along the near boards. 14 seconds left to go on that penalty. Bucktooth out there as well. Rusenstrom clears on the far side, but kept it on the far side by Dickinson. Flair on the corner. T-Ball unable to do anything with that puck on the far side as Rusenstrom takes him into the boards. Dorval takes a check. Jen's able to take the man down in front as that shot doesn't get all the way through, and Rusenstrom watching the Mississauga Ice Dog player as he lays on top of the goaltender. Ilya Demidoff with that puck now up over the blue line, gets a high shot away, goes over top of the net. Had everybody ducking on that one. Give away in front of the net there, and the Jens get a shot away and goes wider than that. Number 22 around behind the net, Nick Jones unable to get anywhere. Govro takes him into the boards, or in there to pick it up. Or out there with Armstrong on de defense, as Passmore is in there to do some good solid four checking. Govro in there to pick up that puck, gets it back to the point to Demidoff. Demidoff gets a shot away, and it's knocked down in front by the Ice Dogs. Jones clears it up, but there to pick it up for the Generals and Spences. He clears it back in, and that clears it back in, and that'll signal a change of players. Upton with that, Larue with that puck gets it back to the point to Baxter. Upton in there, pass more back to Upton in front, holding on, tries to get the shot away, and it was blocked in front. Galverda clears it out on the far side. Cowan giving chase, but he's tied up by Spence. Passmore on the far side. He's unable to get anywhere. Ralph is there to clear it out now for the Generals. Baxter picks it up at center, clears it back in for the Generals. Evans there to hold it up for Coughlin. Coughlin up for Fowler along the near boards. Puck cleared out through center as Colder lays a hit on Fowler. Rusenstrom back in his own zone to pick up that puck. Up off the boards, unable to pick it up. For the Generals, and there's the Ice Dogs to pick it up at center and clear it back up. Cowan takes a hit from Rusenstrom on the far side. Play a little sloppy at this point, Joel. That's been a little bit uh, unorganized for both teams so far at uh, even strength now. Colder, good job to intercept Fowler on that breakout, and the Gens able to keep the puck into the blue line as McMillan has it, gets the shot away, deflected in front, they score! John Kazoris deflected that shot in from McMillan. Well, it was a second effort by John Kazoritz, and that's always important as a forward to have a good second effort. And the defenseman Coughlin on the play was unable to uh, contain John Kazoritz as he went to the net. He had one whack at it, and on the second one was able to put it past the goaltender Evans. And there you have it, gentlemen, it's up 8-1 to one here in the third period. Richard Scott now out of the penalty box after having served to his extended time. Get a look at this on the replay as McMillan takes the shot, and Kazoritz goes to the net. And you're right, it was second effort. I think he put it through the five hole on Evans. So that coming with 16.31 to go here in the third period. 8-1 in favor of the Generals. Cazorus wins that faceoff back to McMillan over to Spence on the far side. Andrew Peters unable to get any worse on the far side as he's checked by Jones. McMillan at center ice off the boards for Corville. Zubik chases down in there. Davis clears around on the far side. Davis in the corner. Up off the boards, unable to clear it out. Spence was there to keep it in. That shot redirected by Corville. Good save by Evans. Corville doing a good job to redirect that shot. Jens clear it back in from center. Davis there to pick it up for the Ice Dogs. Corville gets it back inside his own blue line to McMillan up to Peters along the near boards. And Davis will chase it down inside his own end. Davis circles in behind his net as he's being watched by Govro in there. Govro gets it up to Colley and he wasn't able to connect as Tebald clears it out. Rusenstrom gives it away to Tebald just outside the blue line. Claire trying to get around Rusenstrom in there. He gets a backhand away and a good save in there by Dolson. Richard Scott back out on the ice seeing some action after having been in the box for an extended period of time. 
Demidoff chases back down side of zone blue line. Picked up by Scott up to Colley. He was unable to pick up that pass cleanly. As Theobald's there to intercept. Go over and intercept that pass off the glass and kept in by the generals. Just gets out over the blue line. Demidoff's pass goes astray as it cleared back down the ice by the ice dogs. It's at center. Demidoff unable to get anywhere as T Wall clears in. Over to Page. Back to Claire in front as he goes in and a good save by Dawson as Claire was sent in all alone. Nice passing play by Theobald. It's Page and Claire as the captain of the Ice Dogs was able to get the puck over to Claire who got right in on goal and had a pretty good shot at Derek Dolson. Of course, by the time he looked up, he was already almost in the goal crease and Dolson was there, but the shot ended up in the uh, chest pad area. But good passing play by the Ice Dogs on a positive note. See it here on the replay as uh, Claire uh, splits the defenseman as the uh, one Oshawa defenseman went to the ice there. Rosenstrom took exception to Claire sneaking in behind him there as you saw him pushing and shoving a little bit after the whistle. Doesn't like being shown up, I guess, and he certainly was on that play. Calverta loses the face off to Ralph. Intercepted by the ace dogs. Back to the point that Coughlin, his shot doesn't get through. This pass is going high into the rafters and touches one of the rafters, so that'll bring about a stoppage in play with 14.28 to go here in the third period. 8 1 in favor of the Oshawa Generals over the Mississauga Ice Dogs. Leading 8-1, to one, you take a look at the shots on goal. Generals out shooting Mississauga 38-18 to 18, as we take a look at Brian Passmore down in the Generals zone. One of the strong defensive players. He's seen a lot of time killing penalties this year. It's very good on the faceoffs, and you'll see him more times than not late in the game in some of the important faceoffs. Chris Taylor in there to take the faceoff for the Ice Dogs. Shot goes right on net, picked up by Spence on the far side. Pass were unable to get anywhere as Ralph comes back to help him up. Spence has control of that puck down over his own blue line as he comes up over center ice. Pass up for Ralph, fails to connect and cleared back out by the Ice Dogs. Jim Baxter with that puck now as he gets it up to Daryl Upton. Upton unable to get around the Ice Dogs defenseman and a cleared back out by Calverta. Pass more over to Spence, over to Baxter in the Oshawa defensive end. Spence now at center ice. It's a chance to clear that in on net, and that'll get a change of players for the Generals all the way around. Nathan Calvertig leaves that puck back for his defenseman. Keurig, he's unable to get any places. McMillan picks it up. Over to Rusenstrom on the far side. Rusenstrom's played a strong game out here tonight for the Generals, Joel. Another one of the young rookies for Oshawa, who uh, John Goodwin's shown a lot of confidence in, and his ice time is up as of late, especially with the... Uh, non-existence of Brian Allen since the World Juniors. He's still taking a rest and should be back on Thursday night. Coulter unable to get anywhere inside the offensive zone. It'll be brought back out by the Ice Dogs. Claire unable to get anywhere as Coulter gets back. Coulter up through center. Out there with LaRue and Bucktooth. Cleared back out by the uh, Ice Dogs. Dickinson gets a shot away, goes off the defenseman's pads, and the Gens clear the zone. Josh Evans steers it out for one of the Ice Dogs. Davis brings it back up and clears it inside the Oshawa zone, picked up by Baxter. Pass on the far side, fails to connect, but Andrew Peters chases down there against Fowler. Dickinson brings it back out through center and over to blue line. Gets a weak shot that goes into the corner. Zubik in there to help out. Baxter in the corners. He takes a hit from Fowler. Peters now up over his own blue line. Gets it up to Ian Corville on the side as he comes in over to blue line. Corville drops it back to Kazoris. He's unable to get anywhere. As Corville's taken into the corner. Horrible with that puck behind his own net as he comes out the far side. Or up over the blue line. Up over center ice. Clears it back inside the Oshawa zone, and there's Dolson to hold it up for his defense partner. This is Saga with control, and they lose it. Brought back out by Ian Corville, doing some good back checking. He'll clear it in, and that'll call for another change of players all the way around for the Oshawa Generals. Collie out there with Govro and Scott on the far side. Scott gets it in for Govro, but couldn't connect on the return pass. T-ball with a pass up to Page. Back to Cowan at center. He comes in over the blue line. He's watched by Spence on the far side. 
Govro with that puck. Clears it high out. Picked up by Colley. Just out over the blue line. will have to clear the zone. It'll be an icing or a face-off, and it's a delayed offside here against the Ice Dogs. General should be fairly safe to go into a defensive shell if that's what they wish to do. Leading 8-1 to one here with 11.17 to go in the hockey game. So far, they've been still pouring it on a little bit offensively, but uh, dumping the puck in once in a while. And there was a real knock on the Generals' forwards on the Friday night game in Mississauga with just 14 seconds left. Mississauga was able to tie the game, and it was one of the Generals' forwards trying to beat three Mississauga Ice Dogs in their zone. And, of course, when he was foiled at that attempt, Mississauga came back the other way and uh, broke up the shutout for Derek Dolson. So a little bit of a knock on the team there at that point should have been playing a little more defensive. Demidoff able to keep that puck in at the blue line but picked up by the Ice Dogs and third back out through center. Ralph has it now. T-ball on this side picks up that puck for the Ice Dogs and center and clears up deep into the Oshawa zone. Rusenstrom behind his own net clears along the far board. Pass more unable to get any place against Curry because he picks up that puck. Clears it up off the boards for Theobald. Up to Claire. Out there with Page on this forward unit. Claire unable to get around Demidoff as Upton gets back to help. Rusenstrom. Upton on the far side now as he attempts to break out. He better get his head up and he did just in time as Page had him lined up. Ilya Demidoff doing some good work at center ice and clears the puck back into the Ace Dogs zone with just 10.21 to go here in the third period. Ice Dogs having trouble putting two good passes together here right now. Davis with that puck on the far side. He's taken heavily into the boards by Bucktooth. Colter now with that puck over the blue line trying to get his good speed to his advantage to get around the defenseman, but he couldn't do it. He get the backhand away, but it goes into the far corner. Brought back out by Nathan Calverta. Leroux there to intercept that back pass and brought out by the Generals again. Coulter now with the blue line couldn't control that cleanly. Gets it back to Baxter. Over to Spence on the far side and he'll clear it in. Armstrong back to pick it up for the Ice Dogs. Just about coughed that puck up in his own zone. The Gens managed to keep it in as Peters got to the blue line. Jen's doing some good forechecking here as Corville gets a shot away, just goes wide of the net. Or in front to intercept. Or clears it up on the far side for Taylor. He clears it in. Calverta's looking to get a change. Rusenstrom up on the far side for Peters. Cross ice pass to Corville. He couldn't control it, so it's cleared back into the ice dog zone and out again. McMillan along the near boards. Could be a delayed offside, and there is, as the uh, linesman got tied up there, Hodgins. Haven't seen a whistle in quite some time now, Bob, and that's the first time in a while. But definitely the general's just happy to keep the puck in deep in the Ice Dogs zone. Good luck there at Ian Corville. He's done a good job out here tonight for the generals, as of most of the generals. They've strong game, albeit against uh, one of the weak sister teams in the OHL. Well, we've got Mr. Heckle here right in front of us, that caped guy. In front of us, uh, the pre press box here, Bob, and they're littering them with some kind of confetti or something. I'm sure the, uh, the maintenance people here will love cleaning this up after the game tonight. They may send him the bill. Coglin with that puck behind his own net. Gets that puck up along the far boards. Jen's doing a good job. They're staying right on top of the Ace Dogs tonight, even with that big lead. They're not taking anything for granted. Third back down by the Ice Dogs into the Oshawa zone. Back in to pick up his Rusenstrom up for Colley along the near boards. Colley a pass for Scott and it's deflected deep into the Ice Dogs zone. Scott in there to pick it up for Govro. Govro unable to get that out front of Scott's there to help him out. Colley along the near boards against Wiseman. Go over there back to Colley alone in front of Scott and he just couldn't. Couldn't convert that pass. He was all alone in front. So much for the soft hands we were talking well, I about. Was, I, I was thinking it, but I wasn't going to say it. But yeah, you're right. Richard Scott sort of blundered that one. It was a quick pass. Collie gets a shot away and a nice save in there by Foley. Or Evans, I should say. Josh Evans. Now I'm confused. And we've got a... Looks like we've got a penalty here to Brent Govro. And this could be two minutes for... It's going to be a holding. 
while Dickinson uh, had a beat on the puck and Govero took a one hand off the stick and grabbed him by the shoulder and pulled him down and that's a holding penalty so the Generals will have a couple of minutes to practice their penalty killing here as will the Ice Dogs have a couple of minutes to practice their power play. 7.43 to go and 8-1 to one score in favor of the Generals. I don't think there's much danger of them giving up the two points here tonight. No, you're absolutely right. You'll see that penalty uh, coming up here shortly. Yeah, you're right. Dickinson started to get away and those are one of those I mean are real needless penalties. You're in the offensive zone. Uh, you know, there was no nobody was going anywhere is there. There was no scoring opportunity being taken away. But that's why they call them penalties. Uh, Ice Dogs with that puck up at center now. Cleared back in on the far side by Theobald, picked up by the Generals, unable to clear it out on the first attempt. They do so on the second attempt as Rusenstrom gets it all the way down the ice. Pass more in there against Dan as He picks up the puck in the far side. And Kuda's pass intercepted there. And that was a little bit unfortunate for Brian Pass where he knocked the stick out of his hand and he had a clear path to the net. Not much you can do in the Goldmouth area without a stick in your hands. And that puck cleared up and over the bench at the Oshawa side. And that'll bring about a stoppage of play with 7.02 to go in the third period and 1.19 to go in the penalty to Brent Govro. Well, the Generals have thrown 42 shots at the Ice Dogs now, which is a lot for any goaltender handle to handle. I'm sure the two of uh, the pair of Evans and and uh, Foley. Foley, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm sure they're used to seeing a lot of rubber, as uh, we mentioned more than once tonight. The Mississauga Ice Dogs, not only a young team, but an expansion team that will be rebuilding for the future in the next couple of years or so. But uh, definitely seeing a lot of rubber, and no surprise to them tonight. 42 shots for the Generals. Upton in there loses the faceoff. Wiseman clears it back into the Oshawa zone. Calverda on the far side. Unable to keep it in on the far side is number 17, Lou Dickinson. Chris Taylor with a pass on the far side to Calverta. Calverta unable to get anywhere, drops it into Taylor in the corner. Back out here to Wiseman, who's all alone in front, gets a shot away, and they save by Dolson. He picks up the rebound as Taylor tried to get the second shot away, and now we've got a bit of a mix up on the far side between Jones and uh, who's that, Drew Bucktooth? It's Bucktooth over there, and. Uh, Drew Bucktooth, of course, uh, one of the tougher players in the Oshawa Generals. And Nick Jones, newly acquired to the Mississauga Ice Dogs in a trade deadline deal. Here's another look at the scoring chance for the Ice Dogs. And, of course, it's Chris Taylor who gets the puck out of the corner. And you're going to see a shot here from the, sort of from the point. Chris Taylor gets the rebound, almost does put one in. Would have been nice for him in front of his hometown and his former town of, the, of Oshawa. Probably some fans in here cheering for him tonight. He's talking about Nick Jones, newly acquired by the Ice Dogs from the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Funny story about him before the game, I ran into his equipment manager who was frantically trying to find some boiling water to mold a mouth guard for Jones. He uh, didn't bring his with him from Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> so these trainers are really put to the test even out of town, eh? Oh, they certainly are. Jones with that puck in the corner, unable to do anything with it. Picked up by Taylor, gets it back to Wiseman at the point. Over to Dickinson on the far side, he clears it back into the corner. 25 seconds to go on that penalty to Govro. Taylor with that puck, and now we'll see what's going on. We've got the referee calling an interference call against somebody in front. Well, I believe it'll be either Demidov or McMillan, but I think Demidov was the one in front of the general's net. And now that I've said that, one of the Mississauga Ice Dogs yes, comes over. Yes, you're right. I wonder, because Mississauga did have control of that puck. That's Calverda that's coming to the penalty box area. Nathan Calverda played in 38 games for the... Uh, Ice Dogs so far this season has a total of five points, two goals, and three assists. Good look there to Ilya Demidoff as he goes off on the far side and Curtis Hodgins. Of course, a scary moment here on Sunday night, Bob, in your absence while you were homesick. Uh, just before I tell that story, we'll take a look at the penalty. We didn't catch it, but Sunday night against Guelph, Ilya Demidoff was sent into the boards heavily head first, and uh, it was a bit of a scary moment. He was down on the ice for a little while, but eventually he did get back up, returned to the game, and scored the game's last goal. So. It was good to see him return. Thank God he was all right. Coulter now with that puck inside his own blue line. Spence picks it up. Back over to Coulter along the near boards as Govro is now out of the penalty box, and the Gens will be on a power play for the next minute 34. Coulter goes around, gets a shot right on Evans and a nice save. Or on the far side, gets it out to center there to pick it up as Spence. Corville at the blue line, able to clear it in. Out there with Coulter. And Kazoritz gets it out front. 
Back to the point to Spence. And to Corville. Into the corner to Coulter. Coulter trying to work his way up front. Gets it back to the point to Spence. Spence gets the shot in. Goes into the corner. The Sasaga player there went heavily into the boards. Armstrong, and that shot trying to go high. Lays loose in her crease. The general's unable to get to it. Certainly a wide open net there for anybody if they could have got their stick on it, Joel. I was impressed the way the uh, line of Coulter, Kazoritz, and Corvo were moving the puck on that power play. John Goodwin trying some different power play units than the big line here tonight, and I was impressed with the way they were moving the puck. Corvo lays off on the far side for Baxter. He gets a shot right on her. That's Brent Govro gets that shot away. 33 seconds left in that penalty to Nathan Calverta. A lot of the fans that were in attendance tonight are starting to head toward the exit, get a beat on the traffic. So look at the uh, scoring chance for the Oshawa Generals as Kazoritz put one high and then tried to whack away at it and they missed Sug Ice Dogs. A good job clearing the puck on that one. Worth noting, Bob, up uh, next for the Oshawa Generals is Thursday night when they travel to Peterborough to take on the Pete's big divisional matchup. Of course, the Generals trying to gain some ground on Peterborough and Belleville in the tough East Division. Nobody wants to face Ottawa in that first playoff round, and you can't blame them. And in Friday night, I believe they're in London to face the Knights. It's true, they're going to uh, London to face the Knights on Friday night, and then back here for a game against the aforementioned Ottawa 67s on Sunday, and that'll be a tough one. The Generals have yet to beat them this year. Well, it'll be a good test for them, as uh, Ottawa's always a good test for any team. Claire with that puck circling around center, trying to kill the remaining time on that uh, penalty. He does, Calverta steps out of the penalty box. Demidoff chases down inside his own zone as the icing is waved off. He could have played it. Claire chases Demidoff back in behind his own net. Demidoff up along the near boards. Gets it up to Colley. Colley, a nice cross ice pass for Scott. He's taken in the boards on the far side by Ankuda. Scott has that puck in behind the net, gets it over Gover. He's able to do anything with it. Brought up by Wiseman as he comes in over to the blue line. Spence does a good job of taking him out of the play. A couple of rookies out there in the defense right now. Rusenstrom and Spence, something we haven't seen too much of tonight. Oftentimes, Coach John Goodwin uh, changing things up, especially when there's a lopsided score and leading 8-1 to one here tonight. He'll try a couple of different things, but Mike Rusenstrom has played strong tonight, as you alluded to earlier. Not only that, he's... Uh, played well all year long and I think his ice time has improved with it. Not only that, his ice time has improved with the fact that Brian Allen is yet to return. Trevor Gill is just coming out of the sin bin where he spent the better part of the third, well, the whole, practically the whole third period except for the final 3.15. Well, we'll see if Coach John Goodwin opts to use Trevor Gillies in the last 3.15 of the game after he takes 17 minutes in penalties earlier on in the second period. Face off deep in the Oshawa zone as Kazoritz wins that face off and Spence takes it behind his own net. Clears it up for Kazoritz who comes up through the center. Off to Peters. Peters being watched by Davis. Rusenstrom on the far side gets a weak shot away. And Kuda tries to clear it out and it just clears the blue line. Ian Corville there now to pick it up for the Generals off the boards up for Andrew Peters who goes flying into the ice dog zone. Peters tries to get that puck out in front. Dickinson along the near boards for Wiseman, and he couldn't do anything with that pass. As Demidoff will chase it down inside his own zone. Demidoff a long pass for Upton, and that looked very close to being two lines. Upton gets a shot away. Josh Evans looked a little uh, nonchalant on that one as it went off his blocker. And we got a stoppage of play with 2.28 to go in the third period, 8-1 in favor of the Generals. A nice shot by Daryl Upton looking for the top corner on the goaltender who put the blocker up, and as you said, looked nonchalant on it, making the save. Been watching these clowns in front of the press box here throwing confetti around like there's no tomorrow. We'll come back next week. There'll be a big sign that says no confetti allowed. <laughs> There's another look at the save by Evans as he bats the puck into the corner. Face off deep as you see Ralph in there. He loses that draw wherever the Jens get him. Get it back to the point to Demidoff. He gets a high shot away. Pass we're on this side to try and keep it in against Orr. Upton behind the net in the far corners. Armstrong's on the far side. Pass we're over there to help out. Ralph tries to get that up front and it goes behind the net. Pass where it gets a shot away and it's lying loose in front. 
Goaltender doesn't even know he has it, and that's always a scary moment for a goaltender when you start looking behind you. Danny Armstrong in front taking an exception to Daryl Upton in there snooping around for a rebound, a little bit of pushing and shoving. Take a look at the re uh, re rebound, the replay here as goaltender makes a nice save there, and then as you said, doesn't realize that he has it here, but it's under him, and that's the important thing. Passmore looking for a goal. But thwarted on that attempt as Jonah LaRue steps in to take the faceoff against Calverta. Calverta wins that faceoff, gets it back in the quarter for Curic. Curic unable to clear on the first attempt as it's kept in by the Generals on the far side. Calverta now at center. He's out there with Jones. Jones takes that pass in over the blue line, and that pass goes astray and is picked up by the Generals and brought back up by Jonah LaRue. Jonah LaRue doing a good job to get around Curic. Davis back there to help him out. Jen's over on the far side to pick that up. Bucktooth taking it out of the play behind the net. Jonah LaRue there to pick up that puck along the boards. Play along the boards on the near side. Bucktooth in there trying to get things moving and in there to pick it up was Taylor for the Ice Dogs. Coglin unable to get anywhere is on the far side. Play sloppy right now at center ice with just a minute to go here in the third period. Curric in behind his own net to pick it up. Over to Page in the far side as he clears it out through center back down inside the Oshawa zone. Third back in and that'll be an offside call. And Kuda too anxious to get that puck back in before his teammate cleared the zone. And they're going to call this one of those intentional Offside, so they're going to bring it all the way back down inside the Ice Dogs end. Well, it'll be another unenjoyable bus ride home for Mississauga tonight. Hopefully the snow has let up a little bit for them <laughs> as they have to travel up the 401, not too far of a drive, probably less than an hour, or maybe just around there. But, uh, you know, they're on the wrong end of an 8-1 to one score here, and it's happened to them more times than not this year. So, another tough one for them tonight. And Trevor Gilley is back out on the ice for his rare appearance in his third period. Gillies now at center ice. Everyone to shy away from the rust stuff. Puck just outside the Ice Dogs blue line. Zoris clears the zone. There to pick it up is Ancuda. Gets it up to Scott Page on the far side as he takes a hit from Trevor Gillies. Demet off along the far boards, gets it up for Peters. Peters able to clear the zone as Davis is over there to pick it up. Davis back inside his own blue line. Trying to get some skating room. Up for Page, up to Theobald, and it's cleared back in, and there's the buzzer to end the third period. And the hometown Oshawa Generals victorious over the visitors of Mississauga Ice Dogs by a score of 8-1, to one. Joel. Well, a lot of positives for the Generals to take out of the hockey game tonight. Of course, getting a little bit of uh, production from quite a few of the players on their team, and that's important. Everybody's confidence level gets brought up. And, of course, this is a warm-up game, so to speak, for the big one, which comes on Thursday night when the Generals have to go into the Memorial Center in Peterborough and play the Peets, who are a couple of spots ahead of them in the standings. They currently sit in second behind Ottawa. So the Generals with a big game this week, and then, uh, of course, the next night, Friday night, is the, the London Knights. But definitely a lot of positives for them tonight, and we'll expect to see uh, Tyrone Garner start on Thursday night in Peterborough. Yeah, just thinking about that as I see uh, Dolson's teammates down there congratulating him. And Dolson, as we mentioned off the top of the show, has really held this team in there wild. Garner was away in Calgary. Yeah, and it's tough, you would think, for a guy like Derek Dolson, who's played so well, it's tough for the coach to say, okay, now time to sit on the on the bench again because the number one guy is here when you sort of feel like you've earned something. And uh, now, even though he played well tonight and he's played well over the last few games, he's going to take a seat on the bench and eventually probably be sent down to the Oshawa Legionnaires where he can see more ice time. Absolutely right. Well, just a reminder, you're watching OHL Primetime on Durham Television and in Mississauga on Rogers Community TV.
I certainly did not expect this. The Mississauga Ice Dogs had been playing a lot better lately. They had been keeping the shots on goal down, and uh, th this lopsided score was completely a surprise. Certainly was, but I think you've got to give Oshawa full marks. They didn't let up. They didn't take anything for granted tonight. They came out of the gate early, and they stayed with it the whole game. Uh, if their game plan was to score a lot of goals, well, eight goals is a lot of goals in junior hockey. They played well tonight. They're full value and full marks for the 8-1 win. A lot of teams would say that maybe they're running up the score, but not necessarily true. I mean, they've got a great big game against the Peterborough Pete's on Thursday night, and you can't let up for a single second because if you start doing that, you go into the game in Peterborough kind of laid back and you don't need to do that. Yeah, that's exactly what I said during the uh, during the game. I said to Bob, uh, in a game like baseball, you know, you can let up a little bit, maybe not steal the base, maybe not take a big as a lead off when you're leading a team like that. But in hockey, you can't do that. You have to keep uh, keep the positives going and keep things rolling for a big game on Thursday night, a big divisional matchup against the Peterborough Pete. So the Generals didn't want to let up for a moment, and this was a real confidence builder for them. Yeah, they need a lot of confidence going to that game if they're going to come out of Peterborough with two points. Peterborough has not been a friendly place to the Oshawa Generals so far this year. And all the points get more and more important as the season goes on because everybody knows if you finish fourth, you've got to play the Ottawa 67s in the playoffs. And the Ottawa 67s will be here Sunday night. That's our next telecast on Durham Television. For Bob, Bob Benham and Joel Gallant, I'm Donald Beattie. Thanks for watching.